Hi, I'm Shelly. I was very popular at school and the cheer captain on top of that. One day, my parents told me that my cousin was going to come stay with us. The last time we had seen each other was in childhood. I remember that she was constantly throwing temper tantrums, but Sophia had been a child back then and had probably changed since. A little spoiler, I couldn't have been more wrong. When she arrived, I tried to act friendly. My parents decided Sophia would stay in my room, and I prepared a place for her to sleep in advance. When Sophia saw the mattress, she grimaced and asked me if she could take the bed. I didn't care much, so I agreed. Then she took my things off the shelf and put her own stuff there. But her insolence did not stop there. In the morning, I went to take a shower, and when I came back, I couldn't believe my eyes. Sophia was wearing my makeup. She had used the most expensive cosmetics, too. I'd spent a very long time saving up for them. Sophia began to annoy me, but I tried to stay calm and politely asked her to put the cosmetics back in their place. It was my boyfriend Mark's birthday that day. He was throwing a pool party. I had been really looking forward to it. I'd bought a gift and baked a birthday cake in advance. I was in a great mood, and even Sophia couldn't ruin it. Or at least that's what I thought, until something happened. Sophia saw me getting ready and asked me where I was going. I told her that I was going to my boyfriend's birthday party, and I wish I'd kept quiet. She asked to come with me. Of course I didn't want to take her with me. I had almost figured out how to refuse when my mom walked into our room. Of course you can go with Shelly. Have fun, girls. I groaned inwardly. I didn't want to argue with my mom, so I agreed. Sophia was delighted and immediately asked to borrow some of my things. She reached into my closet and took out a miniskirt and a top. Can I take these? I looked at her and at my clothes, confused. Did she seriously think my clothes were big enough for her? Uh, don't you think that our sizes are a little different? <laughs> Nonsense. I'll agree in this. I don't know why she even bothered asking for my permission because she didn't seem to need it. She put on the top and was jumping around the room, trying to squeeze into my skirt. She looked so ridiculous that I almost burst out laughing. The top and skirt were practically busting at the seams. We got ready. I took the gift and went to the kitchen to get the cake. I opened the refrigerator and froze with my mouth open. Someone had eaten half of it. I almost burst into tears because I had put a lot of effort into cooking it. I immediately called my mom and blew up on her. I told you not to touch the cake. It was for Mark's birthday. Mom assured me that neither she nor dad had touched it. She was definitely not lying. And I realized something. If my parents hadn't eaten it, then the only one could have done it. Well, yeah, I ate it. I got hungry at night and ate a couple of pieces. I was speechless. Sophia didn't feel guilty at all and it infuriated me. But when I started scolding her, to my surprise, mom took her side. Shelly, quit it. You can't even share a piece of cake with your cousin. She gave me money and told me to buy a cake at the store. I was in a terrible mood, but Sophia managed to make things even worse. She didn't stop talking for a second as we walked. A lot of people had come to the party. Everyone was telling Mark how lucky he was to be dating me. We were having fun and everything was going great, but Sophia kept being annoying. She wouldn't leave me alone and wanted to be the center of attention. At some point, everyone started diving into the pool. I used to be on the swimming team and my friends asked me to show them a cool trick. I stood on the springboard, jumped, twisted in the air and landed beautifully. Everyone whistled and applauded loudly. Then Sophia suddenly declared that she could do the same thing. Before we knew it, she was diving into the pool. It was truly something. Everyone who was standing nearby was doused with water. The girl screamed loudly. The water hit the barbecue and the steaks that were being cooked, and the fire went out. I felt terribly embarrassed, while Sophia seemed absolutely fine. She came out of the pool and looked around, seeming satisfied. I told you. Did you see how cool I was? Everyone was sick and tired of her antics, and Mark got an idea. He asked his friend Ethan to talk to Sophia and distract her. At first, Ethan refused, but Mark managed to convince him. The funniest thing was that Ethan succeeded. Sophia started bothering him, and everyone breathed a sigh of relief. At the end of the evening, Mark asked me to come with him to the yard. We sat on the swings. We were hidden by the bushes, so no one could see us. We were finally alone. Mark leaned toward me and was about to kiss me. Oh, there you are. Damn, I had it up to here with her. Sophia had seen us leave and followed us. She had even dragged poor Ethan along with her. I was about to shout at her when Mark smoothed things over. He said it was getting late and it was time to end the party. He called me in the morning the next day and suggested something interesting. A basketball court had been built in this area. People often came there to play. Mark suggested I join his team. Sophia was still asleep and I tried to pack quietly. I wanted to sneak out of the house unnoticed, but it didn't work out. Sophia woke up and, of course, followed me. The game was going great as usual. 
A lot of people came to watch. My unbearable cousin kept getting in the way. She clumsily jumped on the other players and pushed them to get the ball. Mark was the captain of our team and eventually snapped. He asked Ethan to distract Sophia again so that everyone else could have a nice time. Ethan kept refusing, but in the end, he felt sorry for the players and distracted Sophia with the conversation. After she left the court, playing became much easier. Our team soon took the lead. I sat on Mark's shoulders and scored the decisive goal. We were celebrating the victory when suddenly noticed that Sophia was whining at Ethan. I want to do that too. She made him sit down and got on his shoulders. We tried to stop her, but it was too late. Ethan tried to get up, lost his balance, and they fell. Ethan immediately grimaced and groaned. His neck hurt. So Mark and I brought him to the doctor. Sophia came with us. Just imagine. She didn't feel guilty. On the contrary, she said that Ethan should work out more since he couldn't even lift a girl. I couldn't help but say, this is all your fault. It's not that Ethan needs to work out, you just need to lose weight. Sophia snorted, hurt, turned away and didn't say anything else. Luckily, Ethan had just sprained his neck a little. I came home feeling angry at Sophia. I came up to my mom and asked her quietly when Sophia would leave. I was hoping that my cousin would be staying with us for a short time, but I was in for some unpleasant news. Just imagine, Sophia was going to live with us for a whole month, and my parents had also talked to my principal so that she could go to the same school as me. What a nightmare. I couldn't stand it. Please try to make friends with her. She got in some serious trouble, so her parents sent her here for a while. Sophia was usually the source of the trouble, but trying to prove it to my mother was useless. At school, my worst fears came true. My cousin followed me everywhere and demanded that I show her everything. She even sat next to me in the cafeteria. Within five minutes, all my friends hated her. She was picking on everyone, criticizing them, and constantly putting her foot in her mouth. When Sophia finished eating and went to get a second serving, my friends asked me to get rid of her. I would love to, but I don't know how. A classmate of mine was walking by her table. I immediately got an idea. I grabbed her by the arm and sat her down on Sophia's chair. When my cousin came back, there was nowhere for her to sit. We hoped she would move, but that didn't happen. She took a chair from the next table, pulled it up to ours, and sat between Mark and me. I was grinding my teeth with anger. Everyone was annoyed, but Sophia didn't seem to notice it. However, at the end of the day, someone finally put her in her place. The cheerleading team had an important performance coming up, so we were busy preparing for it. After classes, our team came to the gym. The girls and I talked and decided that we needed new costumes. Mine was supposed to stand out, and I was planning on ordering a custom costume. When we started practicing, Sophia came into the gym. She tried to repeat after us, but only got in the way again. She messed up our performance and even tried to lecture us. In the end, my friends couldn't stand it. You can't be in the gym while we're practicing. That's right, get lost. For the first time, Sophia didn't know what to say. She left, and we calmly finished practicing. When I got home, Sophia pounced on me. Everyone hates me because I'm fat. I tried to explain to her that her figure had nothing to do with it. She was just being too brazen. But Sophia didn't want to hear it, and spent the whole evening pointedly watching the TV. When my mom came home from work, I asked her for money for the new costume, but I was in for an unpleasant surprise. Recently, my parents had paid off a loan, and they barely had enough money to last us for the rest of the month. We don't have any extra money, and Sophia's visiting us as well. Her family is also struggling financially now, and they didn't give her any pocket money. That really upset me. How was I supposed to sew a costume now? The next day, I complained to Mark, and he offered to lend me money. I couldn't accept that and refused. Then he came up with another idea. There was a place in our city where singers and dancers performed in the evenings. You're a great dancer. You could try to earn extra money by performing. It was a good idea. And after classes, Mark, Ethan, and I went there. Have you guessed who tagged along yet? Right, it was Sophia again. She was very persistent. When I started dancing, she stood next to me and tried to repeat after me. It was distracting and I couldn't focus. Then she asked Ethan to dance with her. He suddenly snapped and told her everything he thought of her. Sophia turned red and snapped back. She stayed with us for a while longer, then turned around and left. Finally. After she left, things started working out, and I earned some money. The success inspired me, and I came there to perform several more times. As a result, I earned a decent amount of money. I added my pocket money to it and ordered the costume. A couple of days later, I picked it up at the tailor shop and went home satisfied. The costume turned out to be very beautiful. I was really looking forward to performing in it. When I got home, I immediately realized that something had happened. My mom looked frustrated. She said that the money she and dad had been saving up was gone. That was when she noticed the costume in my hands and frowned. Shelly, did you take the money to buy a costume? I was so indignant. How could my mom suspect me of something like that? I said that I earned the money for the costume myself, but she didn't believe me. Then, dad broke in and we had a fight. At some point, Sophia returned home. She heard that my parents were fighting and immediately tried to calm my parents down. 
Shelly, how could you do that? That was the last straw for me, and the fight turned into a real scandal. As a result, my parents took away my pocket money for several months. It was terribly unfair, and I burst into tears. Our team was supposed to perform the next day. I had been looking forward to it for a really long time, but now I wasn't enthusiastic at all. I felt awful, but tried to perform well for the sake of my friends. We nailed it. At the end, I performed a difficult trick, and the audience was delighted. Then Sophia ran out on stage. Would she ever calm down? I noticed that she was wearing new clothes that looked a lot like my costume. When had she bought it? I watched you practice and learned how to do it as well. Let me show you. Sophia wanted to repeat my trick. I shouted that it could be dangerous without proper practice, but she just waved me off. She jumped up, tried to do a somersault, and fell. It was expected, so I wasn't even surprised. I wanted to laugh, but Sophia suddenly started screaming that her leg hurt. We called a doctor. It turned out that she had managed to land so badly that she got a fracture. Sophia was brought to a hospital, and I went with her. Soon, my terrified parents joined in. While Sophia was being put in a cast, I was holding her things. At some point, her phone started ringing. It was a call from a fitness club. I answered, and you wouldn't believe what I found out. It turned out that my cousin had bought a subscription to a weight loss program. I immediately began to wonder where she got the money for it as well as the new clothes. I turned on the speaker phone and my parents heard our conversation. Mom and Dad exchanged glances. After Sophia was discharged, my parents asked her directly if she had taken our money. Naturally, Sophia denied everything, and then she clutched at her leg and pretended to be in a lot of pain. After a while, her parents arrived. They had decided to take Sophia home because of her fracture. I was over the moon, but then I accidentally overheard a conversation between my mother and my aunt. My aunt started crying and confessed something. It turned out that it hadn't been the first time Sophia had stolen something. She often took things from her classmates or neighbors without asking. She had recently gotten into big trouble because of it, and that was why Sophia's parents had sent her to another city. After that talk, Mom apologized to me for her accusations. Shelly, I'm sorry. Your father and I were wrong. You're a very smart girl. The best daughter in the world. We made up. Ethan and Mark came over in the evening. Sophia and her parents were just about to leave. We rejoiced and saw them off together. Finally, I told Sophia it wasn't her looks that she should change. Everybody hates you for your personality, not your looks. Sophia snapped at me and said that she was amazing. Yeah, it seems like some people are lost causes, and my cousin is one of them. One day, when I was a kid, my parents and I went to a supermarket to buy clothes for me. I grabbed my parents' hands and dragged them to a very beautiful dress in a shop window. I wanted it so badly. This dress won't suit you. It's short, and you have ugly legs. Why don't we buy that suit over there? The costume that mom had chosen was terribly ugly. I tried it on and almost burst out crying. I didn't like my reflection in the mirror at all. But mom insisted, and we bought it. A few days after that, I was walking down the street when I suddenly saw a girl. She was wearing the dress I had wanted. It looked incredible on her. I got very upset. My parents had been right. I truly was ugly. Hi, my name is Amber. As you might have guessed already, I wasn't born pretty. I had always hated how I looked. You can't imagine how many insecurities I had. Despite that, I dated the coolest guy in college. Fred also constantly reminded me that I was ugly. He was very handsome and the life of the party. One day, he invited me and his friends to a party. I was a good cook and Fred asked me to make something delicious. I brought my famous hamburgers to the party. Everyone immediately snapped them up and praised him. But I could hear Fred's friends whispering behind my back. Why is he dating such a plain looking girl? Sure, she's a great cook, but other than that, that was pretty unpleasant to hear. The most annoying thing was that Fred didn't even try to stand up for me. He just joked and said that he didn't know how I'd managed to snag him either. Uh, but I loved him and I was afraid of losing him, so I kept silent. After a while, everyone started swimming in the pool. That was when I noticed Fred admiring the girls in swimsuits. I wanted to join them, but I was very self-conscious about my body, so I just sat on a sunbed in my clothes. At one point, a girl called Cleo started hitting on Fred, and he was all too happy to chat with her. It was terribly unpleasant to watch, and I was about to leave when Fred finally stopped me. Are you angry? Cleo's just a friend. Let's stay a little bit longer, and then I'll walk you home. I didn't want to argue with him. I just picked up a cocktail and went back to the sunbed. However, after Fred got in the pool, Cleo came up to me. I don't know why Fred is dating you, but he's clearly out of your league. Well, that's none of your business. My mood was ruined. I didn't wait for Fred, and I just went home by myself. 
let him hang out with that just a friend. And luckily, I was in for a pleasant surprise at home. Our relatives had invited my family to Los Angeles for a few days. That news made me so happy. Wouldn't you be over the moon? We got there the next day. I immediately met my cousin Theo. He was studying psychology and liked photography. The first evening there, Theo dragged me to the beach. I felt self-conscious and I tried to refuse, but he convinced me to go. We swam and watched the sunset. Theo sneakily took some photos of me and then sent them to me. I think they're cool. Would you model for me? Come on. I'm really not that much of a model. He immediately started complimenting me and assuring me that I was very photogenic. He was just flattering me, of course, but it was still nice. In the evening, I sat in my room and I looked at my reflection. Fred's words rang in my ears. He was saying he loved me even though I was ugly. Then I looked at the photos of myself in the swimsuit again. I hesitated a little and I decided to send them to Fred. What if he liked them? He replied immediately, but not in the way that I was hoping. Fred told me not to embarrass myself and just criticized the way I looked again. Theo spent the next day talking me into modeling for him. He said that my looks were perfect for what he had planned. I was upset after what Fred had told me. He was right. I shouldn't embarrass myself again. But Theo kept asking, and I eventually gave in and agreed to help him. We came to the beach again and had a photo shoot in a swimsuit and summer clothes. Passerbys complimented and encouraged me. Getting so much attention was really unusual for me. I felt like they were mocking me. I still felt shy, but Theo was a great photographer and managed to get a few good photos of me. After the photo shoot, he showed me his profile on a photographer's website. Various agencies often search for models on there. He boasted that he'd even worked for a large company before thanks to it. And before I left, Theo once again called me beautiful. He said that I just lacked the confidence. Call me if you want a chat. I'll always support you. When my parents and I got home, I decided I would surprise Fred. I came to his place with no warning. However, instead of my boyfriend, a familiar girl opened the door. It was Cleo. What was she doing there? Soon, Fred appeared behind her and invited me in. I immediately noticed a PlayStation and a half-eaten pizza on the table. They must have been having such a great time together. Cleo looked at me and smiled condescendingly. It was infuriating. I called Fred aside to talk and I demanded an explanation. Do you think this is normal? You talk to her more often than you do to me. He said, again, that Cleo was just a friend. I didn't want to hang out with the two of them, so I asked him to walk me home. Fred reluctantly agreed. He complained about wanting to kill a couple of more monsters in the game. But on the way home, he asked me who had taken the pictures of me on the beach. When I said it was my cousin, he gave me a weird look. Wow, was he jealous? The next day, I had classes in college. During biology, Fred and I had to work together and think of a solution for something, but we both ended up disagreeing. I was sure I was right, but Fred didn't want to listen to me. Do you think you know better than me? I'm smarter than you. In the end, I gave in, and we wrote his solution down. But at the end of the class, it did turn out that he was wrong. See? I was right after all. After hearing that, Fred got even angrier. He accused me of distracting him. That made me angry, but I decided I wouldn't argue with him. What if he felt wronged and then dumped me? And then something interesting happened. In the evening, I got a call from an unfamiliar number. It was an agent from an online youth magazine. They had really liked my photos on the website and were offering me a job. I, I was stunned. What photos? And then it hit me. Theo must have posted the pictures of me in the bikini. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested. I hung up and immediately called Theo. I scolded him for posting my photos and not even warning me. My cousin reassured me and said that the magazine was really cool. He said I should work for them. I disagreed and said I could never be a model. Just look at my bandy legs. Everyone would laugh at me. What are you talking about? Your legs are fine. These are all just dumb insecurities. He hung up on me and then gave me a video call. Theo studied psychology for a reason. He tried to figure out why I lacked confidence. He made me do all sorts of fun tests and I remembered that it all began in my childhood. My parents had always said I was smart, but pretty ugly. Mom often joked about it. You didn't get your looks from me, that's for sure. 
I had started to feel self-conscious and consider myself ugly. Then I had met Fred. He called me ugly too. So I started to believe it. I told Theo a lot about Fred. I mean, I had a lot to get off my chest. You know, that's just who he is as a person. He feels good about himself when he puts other people down. Relationships shouldn't be like that. If I were you, I'd break up with him. Oh, no. The thought of breaking up terrified me. I, I couldn't live without Fred. In the end, Theo convinced me to agree to the magazine's offer. I called the agent back in the morning. He quickly sent me a contract, and I signed it. Soon, my photo appeared on the cover of an online magazine. Fred definitely would not have liked that, so I didn't tell him anything. I decided I would hide it from everyone. A couple of days later, I got a call again and I was invited to a photo shoot. It was taking place in my hometown. I was terribly nervous. Theo called and calmed me down. When I arrived on the photo shoot, they gave me a cool Marvel outfit. At first, they were only taking photos of me, but then a guy joined me. His name was Dave, and he was gorgeous. T to be honest, even more so than Fred. But just look at him! Handsome, right? Of course, I immediately got shy, and I didn't know how to act. But Dave turned out to be really nice and super friendly. He comforted me and gave me some tips on posing. After the photo shoot, he invited me to a cafe. We drank coffee and chatted, and Dave paid me a lot of compliments. So I relaxed pretty quickly. It was so, so weird. He was the second person to call me beautiful. I think I started to believe it a little. However, as we were leaving the cafe, I suddenly noticed Cleo nearby. She was looking right at us and smiling maliciously. Damn it. She was gonna tell Fred about it. And I was right. In the evening, he came over. Who was the guy you were with at the cafe? I was about to explain everything, but I suddenly changed my mind. I remembered how Fred talked about Cleo. So I just told him the same thing. He's just a friend of mine. You should have seen Fred's face when I said that. He was annoyed, but he didn't say anything else. We were hanging out in my room when he suggested we watch a movie. He took my laptop, opened the browser, and damn it, busted. I had a tab with the magazine's website open. Fred saw the picture of me on the cover and fell into a stupor. Then he got angry and started yelling. What were you thinking? I bit my lip nervously. I had to admit that I'd worked as a model and hadn't told anyone about it. S sort of leading a secret life. Fred got mad, abruptly stood up and stormed out. He even slammed the door on his way out. I couldn't sleep all night. <laughs> to be honest, I was worried that he would break up with me. I went to college in the morning in a terrible mood, but I was in for a surprise. Fred was waiting for me by the entrance with a bouquet of flowers. It was crazy. I hadn't gotten gifts from him in so long. He acted strange all day, didn't scold me, was super attentive. After classes, he even asked me out on a date. I was supposed to go to a photo shoot, but I called Dave and asked him to cover for me. Fred and I went for a walk into the cinema and we had a great time. And at the end of the evening, he asked me not to work for a magazine anymore. I told him that I'd already signed a contract, so I just couldn't refuse. And Fred started to get annoyed again. What's more important to you? Some stupid photo shoots or our relationship? I promised I would think of something. I came home and I immediately called Theo. I told him that Fred and I were doing great. I thought my cousin would be happy for me, but for some reason, he doubted that. Just because Fred changed tactics doesn't mean he's a changed man. He's still gonna keep trying to manipulate you. Don't you see? I shouldn't have called him. I didn't want Theo to ruin my mood, so I hung up. The next day was supposed to be my day off, but in the morning, the magazine called and said they had moved the photo shoot from the previous day and I was to come at once. I couldn't get out of going and I just hoped that Fred wouldn't find out about it. I posed with Dave again and we looked so cool. Transforming for photo shoots turned out to be really interesting. I was growing to love it. It might be a little hard to believe, but I even liked the photos. Was I really as beautiful as it looked? Everything was going great until the end of the photo shoot. Fred suddenly burst into the studio. It was a nightmare. He threw a fit and demanded that I leave with him right that second. He grabbed my arm and started dragging me away. Dave suddenly intervened. Hey, let her go. You have no right to treat a girl like that. Amber doesn't belong here. Her, a model? Don't make me laugh. 
Dave came to my defense and suddenly pushed him. Fred was about to push back, but the security guards separated them and demanded that Fred leave. He looked at me angrily. If you don't come with me now, we're breaking up. Got it. Nobody would want you but me. Nobody! And at that moment, something clicked in my head. Why was I even with this guy? He was a narcissistic jerk! It suddenly dawned on me that Theo was right. Our relationship wasn't a good one. I didn't want to be with Fred anymore, and I chose to stay in the studio. Fred left, slamming the door as usual. Dave supported me. He suggested we go shopping and take our mind off things. So we went to several different shopping malls. I had just been paid for the first time, and I bought some new clothes with the money. Then I went to a beauty salon and got a few different treatments. I felt like a completely new person. When I came to college after the weekend, everyone noticed my transformation. One of my classmates had even seen my photo in the magazine. Now, everyone knew that I was moonlighting as a model. All of a sudden, I became popular. Everyone in college was talking about me. They were complimenting me and asking me about the photo shoots. Weirdly enough, I didn't feel shy anymore. I liked being the center of attention. <laughs> At one point, Fred came up to me. He said that he was overreacted and wasn't actually gonna break up with me. And I don't know why, but that made me laugh. Maybe you're not gonna break up with me, but I'm dumping you. I respect myself too much now to date a guy like you. Fred was absolutely stunned. He definitely was not expecting me to say that. Our classmates heard our conversation, and they were also surprised by my behavior. But. I noticed that most of them supported me, especially the girls. Cleo suddenly came up to Fred. She took his arm and smiled at me triumphantly. Well, I could only really feel sorry for her. My popularity grew rapidly. I was starting to learn to value myself. I realized that no one had the right to pressure anyone or to forbid them from being themselves. Dave and I started dating. I also talked to Theo a lot. He's writing his term paper on the topic of relationships. I still pretty often ask him for advice, and I'm really glad I had such a nice cousin. He's coming to visit us soon. Fred and Cleo are still dating. She used to be very vibrant, but now it's like she's a shadow of her former self. Yeah, but little wonder with a boyfriend like that. Fred seems to be a hopeless case. Hi, my name is Anna, and I come from a family of aristocrats. I used to live in England and go to a boarding school for girls, but some time ago, my family moved to America. My life had always followed a strict schedule. I had always wanted more freedom, so I was very happy when I was transferred to a regular public school. On the first day of classes, my parents reminded me to mind my manners and behave. I acted like a real lady, but for some reason my classmates looked at me weird. I noticed that they were acting quite differently. They were free and liberated. It was so unusual. But the teachers praised me and immediately began to set me as an example. I was good at drawing. When the history teacher found out about it, he asked me to make a painting for the school's historical exhibition. During a break, one of my classmates called Blake suddenly approached me. He had a lot of tattoos and an unusual haircut and wore provocative clothes. I'd never talked to anyone like him, so all I could do was stare. I even forgot to mind my manners. Look at this lady. Seems like I've met an angel. His friends came up to us, laughing loudly. Talking to them was so interesting <laughs> that I didn't even mind being ridiculed. I wanted to know all about their lives. It turned out that Blake and his friends called themselves a gang. They loved extreme sports, listened to heavy rock, and even drove a convertible. Blake's father was a master of sports and rally, and let him drive his car. I was delighted with my acquaintances. I wanted to be like them. When I mentioned it, Blake laughed. You should stay in your fairy tale world. It fits you perfectly. Soon I heard my classmates discuss a party. Blake's gang was throwing it the next day at a secret location. I really wanted to go there. Of course, no one invited me, but I persisted. After classes, I went to the schoolyard. Blake was already getting into his convertible. I plucked up the courage and asked him if I could come to the party. Blake's friends <laughs> burst out laughing. He grinned as well, but to my surprise, he allowed it. Come if you want, just don't faint when you do. The next second, his car took off. I really liked Blake and I wanted to impress him. I decided to change and went shopping. I had my own credit card that I almost never used. I'd saved up a lot of money and wanted to buy new clothes and completely change my style. I chose short skirts, leather tops, and ripped jeans. I'd never worn anything like it, but I wanted to try. 
When I came out of the fitting room and looked in the mirror, I didn't recognize myself at all. A completely different person was looking at me. I suddenly noticed my parents in the reflection. Just imagine, they were also walking around the mall. I quickly ran back to the fitting room. Heck, it seemed mom had noticed me. I prayed for them to leave. When they did, I paid for the clothes and got some temporary tattoos. I never would have dared to get real ones, but those? Why not? At home, my mom told me she had seen a girl in the mall that looked a lot like me. Except she was dressed terribly. The young people here are too wild. Ugh, <sighs> that was close. I quickly went to my room and looked around it. I noticed how boring it was. I was especially annoyed by the pink color surrounding me. Blake was wrong about one thing. Fairy tale world did not suit me at all. I didn't want to live in it anymore. I was about to go to bed when I remembered my teacher's request, so I had to choose what to draw and then work on the painting late at night. In the morning, I went down to the living room in my usual clothes and had breakfast with my parents. Dad offered me a ride to school. I lied and said that I wanted to walk there. I waited until my parents had left and changed into my new clothes. I applied the temporary tattoos and didn't recognize my reflection once again. I couldn't believe I was going to school looking like that. And you know what? I really went for it. My classmates looked at me in surprise again. Most importantly, Blake noticed my new look. By the way, the teachers did as well, however my look was the only thing that changed. I still laid out my textbooks carefully and was very polite to everyone, so none of the teachers scolded me. In history class, I showed my painting to the teacher. He was very pleased. He pointed out the things I could improve. You will also be telling the visitors about this historical event. A museum director, Mr. Collins, is coming to our school. We need to impress him. I promise not to let him down. I was supposed to go to a French course in the evening. I called the teacher and said I wasn't feeling well. I had better plans. After all, Blake had invited me to his party. The gang's secret place turned out to be the roof of an abandoned building. You can't imagine how cool it was. They had put pillows everywhere, a bar out of planks, and a small fire in the center. Blake turned on rock music. Everyone was having fun, frying sausages and eating fast food. I'd never tasted anything like it, but I liked it. Everything was new and unfamiliar to me. I realized I didn't want to stop at changing my clothes. I wanted to go further. I started dancing and gradually relaxed. Then I sat down next to Blake and we got to talking. He told me I should do something rebellious. Why don't you burn the painting you made for tomorrow's exhibition? What? Doing something like that never even occurred to me. That seems like going too far. Some rules shouldn't be broken. Blake chuckled and objected. My gang only has one rule. There are no rules. I wanted to impress him and I was also really tired of all the stupid rules. I decided to do it. It might be hard to believe, but I burned my painting. Everyone immediately began to whistle and applaud. I got home late, I changed my clothes in the yard, and headed in. Mom immediately pounced on me and asked where I had been. I had to lie and said the first thing that came to my mind, that I had gone to the theater with a new friend of mine. Mom was surprised. To the theater? Wow, your dad and I went there too. Did you like the performance? I managed to get away with the lie, but only just. Then mom suddenly sniffed and said I smelled like smoke. It's probably the smell from the street. The neighbors are barbecuing. I was full of adrenaline. I'd never lied to my parents so blatantly before. The next day, the history teacher asked me to see the finished painting. It felt a bit awkward. I lied and said I had ruined it by accident. The teacher demanded I speak at the exhibition anyway, and at least tell the visitors about the scene I had been drawing. During the break, I went to the dining room. I got a coffee and wandered down the hallway. Lost in thought, I was practicing my speech in my head when I suddenly ran into a stranger. I spilled coffee all over him. The man immediately shouted and went to the bathroom to wash out the stains. When I came to the exhibition, I wasn't feeling confident at all. How was I supposed to talk about a painting that didn't exist? But that wasn't the worst part. I was in for an unpleasant surprise. The guy I had spilled coffee on turned out to be Mr. Collins. I was taken aback and forgot my entire speech. As a result, I did poorly. I constantly got confused and distracted. Mr. Collins looked at me skeptically and then whispered to the history teacher, Is this the talented student you told me about? On the one hand, I was upset that everything had turned out that way, but on the other hand, I was glad for once I wasn't perfect. The French course began right after classes. I was about to go, but got held up at school and was running late. As I was walking down the street, a convertible pulled up next to me. Blake offered me a ride. I agreed, and it was amazing. Blake drove the car the same way he lived. He ignored all the rules. He cut off other cars and drove around the city at a crazy speed. At some point, there was a red traffic light ahead of us. Blake slammed on the brakes, but we didn't manage to stop in time. The convertible crashed into the car in front of us. The impact wasn't very strong, but we did leave some dents. I must have had some sort of bad luck streak because the driver of the car turned out to be Mr. Collins. 
He saw me, turned red with anger, and said through gritted teeth, It's you again? He started arguing with Blake. At first I stayed silent, but then I stood up for Blake. Mr. Collins started yelling and sputtering. He almost called the police, but Blake eventually gave him money and we left. By the way, why were you in such a hurry? When I told him about the French course, Blake suggested I skip it and have fun. How could I miss such an opportunity? I called the teacher and lied about being sick again. Blake left the car and the parking lot, and we drove to a gaming club. I was surprised that Blake wasn't worried about the dent on the convertible. When I asked him about it, he just shrugged and said that he never worried about anything at all. We had a great time at the club. Then we went for a walk, and Blake showed me some cool places, abandoned buildings and beautiful streets. We lived in different worlds, but it felt like I'd known him my whole life. I came home late again. I wanted to change in the yard like last time, but Dad was standing there. So I decided to sneak into my room. As soon as I got in, there was footsteps outside the door and my mom barged in. I barely had time to throw on a long bathrobe. Where have you been? Your French teacher called asking about your health. Anna, have you been skipping classes? It seemed pointless to deny it, but I came up with a new lie. I said that my friend needed help, so I had gone to her place. Mom pursed her lips. This better be the last time you're pulling something like this. You must stick to your schedule and not get distracted. What friend were you helping anyway? Do I know her? I mumbled something unintelligible and pretended to be tired. After mom left, I breathed a sigh of relief, changed into pajamas, and went to bed. I had almost fallen asleep when I heard someone knock on my window. My room was on the second floor. Can you imagine how scared I was? I carefully pulled back the curtain and could not believe my eyes. Blake had climbed up the drain pipe to see me. It was crazy. What if my parents saw him? Blake told me to relax and not to worry. We spent most of the night chatting. My first impression of him had been wrong. We found a lot of things to talk about. I realized I was head over heels in love, and then something else happened. Blake kissed me before he left. My heart almost jumped out of my chest. Mom wanted me to do a million things over the weekend, but Blake suggested we spend time together instead. You've probably guessed what I did already, right? I pretended to be sick so that my mom would leave me alone. I tried to act convincingly, but she still squinted suspiciously at me. In the end, she believed me and my parents left. I immediately got out of bed, quickly packed up, and hurried to Blake. After all, we're going on a real date. Here's a little spoiler. It was a very unusual date. I'm gonna tell you about it. At first, everything was going great. We skateboarded and then went on some extreme rides in an amusement park. The last one turned out to be the scariest of them all. We got into the booth right before it started moving. Blake admitted that he had run out of money, so we went without tickets. That was when it got truly extreme. No sooner had we gone down that the cashier ran up to us. A couple of cops were hovering behind him. Blake grabbed my arm and we started running away. The cop rushed after us. It was insane. At one point we were running past a museum. Someone was coming down the stairs and I accidentally bumped into them. The man lost his balance and fell. I turned around and damn it, it was Mr. Collins. He choked with indignation. There was no time to apologize. We ran on and soon broke away from the cops. We stopped to catch our breath and burst out laughing. Our emotions were off the charts. Blake suddenly complimented me. He admired how quickly I was cutting loose and changing. We kissed again, but at the worst possible moment, I got a call from my mom. She asked me about my well-being and told me that they would be home soon. I had to head back at once. I managed to arrive just a couple minutes before them and jumped under the blanket without even taking my clothes off. My parents walked into my room. Mom suggested calling a doctor. I assured her I was feeling much better. Well, that's great. An important guest is coming over for dinner tomorrow. We need to make a good impression on him. It's important for my work. What terrible news. I was sick of such pompous dinners. The next day, I went to school and told Blake about the dinner. Surprising even myself, I asked him to come. It won't be so boring with you there. I don't care if you don't know etiquette. Unfortunately, Blake said that a cool concert was taking place that evening. His whole gang had dreamed of going there. Blake even managed to get me a ticket. It sounded so cool, but I really couldn't go. I didn't want to get Dad in trouble. Naturally, I was in a terrible mood in the evening. I put on the dress my mom had chosen. My parents reminded me to act like a perfect lady. An architectural monument in the city was soon going to be restored. Dad hoped his company would be the one to do it. We were sitting at a set table when the doorbell rang. My parents went to open the door and stayed in the living room. When they returned with the guest, I gaped in surprise. The guest turned out to be Mr. Collins. I looked completely different, so he didn't recognize me at first. However, after sitting down at the table, he even cried out in surprise. It's you again? My parents were confused and asked what was going on. I was hoping for a miracle, but no such luck. Mr. Collins told them about everything. My failed presentation, the wrecked car, even the cops. But worst of all, he told them about Blake. I grabbed my head. 
Now I was definitely finished. You should focus on your daughter's upbringing before taking on any serious projects. He got angry and stormed out. My parents ran after him, and then I heard a commotion by the door. I decided to take a look at what was going on and froze. Blake was standing in the doorway. I barely recognized him in a suit. He had missed the concert for me. Mr. Collins was boiling with anger. He said that Dad wouldn't get the project and left. My parents guessed that Blake was the guy Mr. Collins had been talking about. So, this is your friend. Mom realized it had been me she'd seen at the mall. I had never seen her look so furious. She told Blake to get out and leave me alone at once, but he surprised me. He politely calmed my parents down, made conversation, and acted like a real gentleman. I couldn't believe my ears. I couldn't help but tell that cool guy what I thought of him. You can't pretend to be a rebel and then make small talk with my parents. Blake remained unperturbed. He said that he acted depending on the situation and that hiding your rebellious spirit was sometimes okay. That was when I found out something interesting. I know it's hard to believe, but it turned out that Blake had studied at a boarding school for boys. He transferred to our school a few years ago. I thought about his words. It seemed like I had gone a bit too far. What I had been doing didn't really feel right. Blake managed to find a common language with my parents. We convinced them that it was okay to relax sometimes. Since then, I had been in charge of my own fate and finally had time for my hobbies. By the way, I made a new painting and gave it to my history teacher as a gift. Then, Blake and I went to the museum and talked to Mr. Collins. He apologized and I asked him to give my dad another chance. It went well. Now dad's company is restoring the architectural monument. I eventually found myself and don't go to such extremes anymore. Hi, I'm Gloria. I was raised by my older sister, Agatha, and she never let me have any fun. I wasn't allowed to go to clubs or even just for a walk, all because of how I looked. Beauty can cause problems, got it? One day we went shopping. I stared at all the beautiful dresses there, but Agatha only let me try on ugly rags. What did I tell you? You need to use your mind to get what you want, not your looks. I trudged into the fitting room, and I saw Agatha's face change. She was looking at the other department at the store and seemed scared. To my surprise, she put the clothes back in their place, grabbed my hand, and dragged me towards the exit. Hey, why are we leaving? Move it, and don't ask any questions. I was supposed to go to a tutor that evening, but Agatha said that all of my tutors would have to come over here from then on. Ugh, why? It's one thing to forbid me from going to clubs, but <laughs> my tutor's houses? The next day, I went to school feeling sad. During the break, my only friend Catherine came up to me. Are you all right? I wanted to let it all out, so I told her about my problems with my sister. Ugh, Agatha is such a bore. She can't treat you like that. I think she's just jealous of your looks, so she's hiding you from everyone. I told her that that couldn't be it. Agatha was beautiful too. That's why she's acting like that. She's afraid you'll outshine her. Being beautiful isn't a bad thing. You could use your looks. You spend so much time studying when you could be getting perfect marks for your pretty face. Catherine convinced me to try it. Our physics teacher was a young man. He asked me a question during the lesson. I knew the answer, but I pretended to be confused, batted my eyelashes, and pouted. Could you let me off this time, please? To be honest, I didn't know how to flirt, but I must have done okay, because <laughs> it worked. Just imagine. He smiled at me and gave me until the next class to properly prepare. Was it really this simple? My math tutor was waiting for me at home. I decided to take a chance and try the same trick on him. I doubted it would work again, but it did. You're so cute. Okay, just complete the task before our next session. When Agatha came home from work, I tried to talk to her. I told her about how I felt trapped, but she didn't even want to listen to me. You have to achieve something. You can't waste your time being distracted by friends and other nonsense. I got angry, and for the first time in my life, I talked back. Why was everyone allowed to do everything but not me? Maybe Catherine was right, and Agatha was just jealous of me. We had a fight, and I locked myself in my room. My sister usually drove me to school and picked me up after classes, but the next day she was busy at work, so I walked home with Catherine. Let's go to a cafe. I can't. I have to meet my tutor in a half hour. I hesitated a bit more, but in the end, I decided I would skip the session. Shouldn't I be allowed to do that? Just once? At the cafe, Catherine flirted with the bartender a little, and he gave her a discount. I followed her example. 
pretty girl like you gets coffee for free. Wow, that felt so good to hear. At the same time, I got mad at my sister again. I should never have wasted so much time listening to her. Soon, I got a call from my tutor. I'm waiting outside your house. Sorry, but I won't be coming today. Naturally, I was in for a world of trouble again in the evening. Agatha scolded me for my behavior. I was so sick of listening to her lectures. I'm tired, okay? I want to hang out with friends and have fun. You're pretty too, and you still have fun and relax. It felt like Agatha wanted to say something, but changed her mind at the last moment and gave me a weird look. I got the feeling she was hiding something. In the morning, my sister left early for work and told me to just take a taxi to school. <laughs> I didn't listen to her, and I decided to walk there instead. Moreover, I had an idea. I wanted to change my style. Yay! So, I took some of Agatha's clothes. They were all beautiful and trendy, unlike all of mine. I went to her bedroom and I chose a cool dress. But as I was in the closet, a folder suddenly fell from the top shelf. It must have been taken out recently because it didn't take much for it to fall. The documents fell all over the floor and I had to pick them up. It turned out those were hospital records. Agatha had done plastic <gasps> surgery. Judging by the photo I saw, she hadn't always looked as gorgeous as she did now. The first few surgeries had been performed by a certain Mr. Brooke. Wow, why hadn't my sister ever told me about this? It seemed like Catherine was right. Agatha was jealous of me. She was such a hypocrite. How could she tell me looks weren't important after getting plastic surgery? At first, I wanted to talk to her, but then I decided not to. I wasn't about to live by my sister's rules anymore. That same day, I asked Catherine to introduce me to her friends. We're skipping the last classes. You coming with? We walked, hung out in cafes, and then went to the outskirts of the city. It felt so freeing. I was overwhelmed. After a while, I got a call from my tutor. I was missing our session again. But that didn't bother me at all. I turned off my phone so neither he nor Agatha would bother me. I came home late. Lights were on in every window when I arrived. A police car was parked nearby. My heart immediately sank. Had something happened? I heard Agatha telling something to a policeman. She looked scared to death. She suddenly noticed me and said, Thank you, officers. It's okay now. After the door closed behind them, Agatha went berserk. I'd never seen her look so furious before. Where have you been? Why'd you turn your phone off? I even called the cops. I thought you'd been kidnapped. What's the big deal? I just went out for a walk. Nothing happened to me. What are you wearing? Is that my dress? Ah, damn it. I'd wanted to change in the yard, but completely forgotten. My sister got even angrier, and we had another fight. While Agatha was taking a shower the next morning, I snuck into her room and took her clothes again. After that, she drove me to school. I'll pick you up after classes. I changed my clothes in the bathroom and only then went to class. We had a test in physics. I looked at the questions in horror and I realized I didn't know any of the answers. I hadn't been studying at all recently. Uh, well, at least I still had my good looks. I stayed behind after class and waited until every other student had left. Then I came up to the teacher and sat down on the edge of his desk. I know I failed the test, but you'll still give me a good mark, right? The teacher folded his arms and frowned. Gloria, your behavior is unacceptable. You should study hard instead of flirting with everyone. This could end very badly for you. I jumped off his desk, grabbed my bag, and ran out of the classroom. He was just as boring as my sister. After school, I wanted to sneak out with my friends. However, when we got out, I suddenly noticed Agatha's car at the gate. I tried to sneak away through the schoolyard, but she noticed me right away. I had to wave goodbye to my plans and go home. On the way there, I got a call from my tutor again. Could you print out some materials for our session? So we popped into a printing center. Agatha was paying for some copies when she suddenly turned pale. It seemed like she'd seen someone on the street. Before I knew it, she'd already grabbed a paper bag and punched a few holes in it. And then, you won't believe what happened next. She put the bag on my head. Uh, what are you doing? Don't take it off. Come on. On the way out of the store, we ran into a man. I probably wouldn't have even noticed him, except mm, he looked familiar. I was so stunned, I forgot about the stupid bag, and I got into the car without taking it off. But the strangest thing happened at home. 
We arrived at the same time as my tutor. Gloria is switching to distance learning. At home, Agatha ran to her room, took a suitcase out of the closet, and started throwing things into it. Get your stuff, we're leaving. We're moving to another city. No, better yet, another state. Wait, uh, what? I didn't understand what was going on. Why was she suddenly acting so weird? I'm not going anywhere. I've only just found friends. All of a sudden, Agatha's phone rang. She answered it, turned on speakerphone, and continued to pack our things. My principal was the one calling. Gloria's grades have been slipping lately. She used to be an excellent student, but she's falling behind. I expected Agatha to start yelling at me, but she didn't even listen to the rest and turned off her phone. It was only then that it dawned on me something serious was happening. I hesitated some more, and then I went to pack my things. Agatha never explained what had happened. We just moved to another state. We rented an apartment there, and Agatha found a new job. She used to have a cool one, but now she had to work as an ordinary manager. That was weird, but the worst thing was that I was almost never allowed to leave the house. I even studied online. I only went into town with Agatha, put on a mask, a cap, and sunglasses. Was she ashamed of my appearance or jealous? Either way, I quickly got tired of living like this. Being stuck inside was awful. One day, I was scrolling through my phone while Agatha was at work. I had recently created an Instagram account. Agatha was monitoring my social media, and I couldn't really talk to anyone. So I had to create a new account. To my surprise, I got a DM from a local photographer. He had, apparently, seen my photos mm -hmm. and wanted me to model for him. He complimented me a lot and suggested we meet. I looked through his account and read through the comments, but I didn't find anything suspicious. I was sick to death of being alone, so I agreed. We met in the city center. The photographer turned out to be a nice guy. He took some pictures of me. Do you want to see a beautiful place? I agreed, without suspecting a thing. We came to an area I had never visited before, and the photographer got out of the car. I wanted to follow him, but the door was locked. I pulled the handle and I shouted, but no one could hear me. <laughs> I was such an idiot. I should have listened to my sister. Right, I could call her. As soon as I picked my phone up, a man got into the car. I recognized him. I had seen him at the printing center. Once again, I noticed that he wasn't just familiar. He looked similar to me. Don't worry, I won't hurt you. My name is Mr. Brook. Huh? Mr. Brook? Why did that name sound familiar? That was when I remembered seeing it in Agatha's medical records. It was the name of her plastic surgeon. Gloria, I'm your father. I was speechless. What was he talking about? No, our parents died when Agatha and I were young. Mr. Brooke chuckled. Agatha, that's not her real name. All of a sudden, there was a knock on the car window. I turned around and I saw my sister with a phone in her hand. I could see a map on its screen. She must have tracked my location and come for me. Mr. Brooke opened the window and stared at her. Well, are you finally done running away? Agatha said nothing and told me to get out, but I stayed where I was and demanded an explanation. Is it true that this man is our father? <laughs> Mr. Brooke laughed. Your father? No, Gloria. I am your father. And she's not your sister. She's your mom. Did I hear that right? Was he joking? But Agatha had frozen and looked down. She stayed silent for a moment and then told me everything from the very beginning. A long time ago, she had met Mr. Brooke, and they'd even had a daughter. Had, uh, me. Agatha mm -hmm. hadn't been much to look at, but she'd always had dreams of changing and becoming beautiful. Mr. Brooke had done several surgeries on her. The results had been amazing. Agatha not only turned into a beauty, but also started looking 10 years younger. He immediately began to promote his work. He would show her off at various seminars, boasting about his skills. Bit by bit, Agatha began to feel like an exhibit. Mr. Brooke was obsessed with work and wanted to keep improving her face. And in the end, she couldn't stand it any longer and had taken me and run away. She had moved to the country and changed her appearance one more time so no one would recognize her. Then, she'd also changed her name and surname with just a few documents. She had pretended to be my sister to make sure Mr. Brooke wouldn't find us. He had been looking for a mother and a daughter. After all, back then, Agatha had been beautiful, but lacked any skills. At first, 
she'd been using her looks, so she'd gotten herself into trouble and had to learn from her mistakes. Then, she took some courses and got an education. She'd come back to the States after becoming successful. However, she moved to another city. For many years, everything had been going well. But Agatha was still afraid he would find us. That's why she hadn't let me do anything. She had learned from her mistakes and taught me that the most important thing was my mind, not my appearance. Some time ago, she had seen Mr. Brooke in town and got scared. He would be able to recognize me because I looked just like him. I noticed you in the printing center and I understood everything. I followed you and found out you moved here. My friend lives nearby. The photographer who contacted you. I asked him to help. I was so shocked, I didn't know how to react. It couldn't really be happening. I thought my whole life I was an orphan. And now, both my mother and father had shown up at once. I only wanted to find my daughter. Agatha is exaggerating to make me look like a monster obsessed with surgeries. Don't listen to him. Gloria, do you really want to stay with someone who's been lying to you for so many years? Come with me. I was so overwhelmed, I almost burst into tears. I didn't know who to listen to or who to trust. In the end, I got out of the car and I still left with Agatha. Soon, we got back to our hometown. Despite Agatha's lies, I still trusted her more. Gloria, I'm sorry. I just wanted to protect you. What if Brooke got obsessed with you too? I couldn't live in constant fear. I'm sorry, but I don't want to do everything you say anymore. This is my life. I went back to school and I started hanging out with friends after classes. But Agatha was right about one thing. I couldn't count on my looks alone. I took up studying again and went back to being the perfect student. I apologized to my physics teacher and I even started working on a science project. Things were looking up. But one day after school, Mr. Brooke found me. Gloria, I'm sorry about everything. I really do just want to get to know you. I thought about it and decided to give him a chance. We started hanging out and kept it a secret from Agatha. He would give me gifts and pocket money. One day, he invited me to his clinic to show me the place where he worked. It looked interesting, but creepy. I would never be brave enough to get surgery like that. The next time we met, he gave me a skin tightening cream. You have to start taking care of your beauty while you're still young. He gave me a weird look, but I didn't pay much attention to it at the time. A couple of days later, he invited me to the clinic again. We were talking in his office when Mr. Brooks suddenly suggested something that I hadn't been expecting. You have such beautiful facial features, but if we tweaked your lips a little, you'd look even better. I tensed up. Was he out of his mind? I wasn't even 18 yet. At some point, a nurse knocked on the door and called him somewhere. When he left, I noticed a giant folder on his table. I got curious, opened it, and found all sorts of articles and notes inside. Mr. Brooke had written about the benefits of the cream he'd developed. Then I turned the page and was stunned. He wanted to perform plastic surgery on teenagers. Agatha had been right. He was crazy. I got scared. I was about to run away, but then Mr. Brooke came back into the office. I managed to close the folder in time and acted like everything was fine. I sat with him just a little longer so he wouldn't suspect anything. And before I left, he told me I should consider getting a lip surgery. At home, I told Agatha everything. She was horrified. We have to go now. That lunatic will never leave you alone. Even the police won't help. He has a lot of connections. And so, we packed our necessities and left the city at night. Now we're staying in a small house in Colorado. We're leaving for another country in a couple of days. I don't want to run away, but I have no choice. Have you ever felt like you were living someone else's life? Hi, I'm Anna, and I felt like that all the time. My dad and I lived in a very small town. He worked as an auto mechanic, and I sang in a church choir. I had a very strict upbringing. I'd always only worn long gray dresses, and life in our city seemed gray to me as well. I felt like a stranger there. I didn't even have anything to talk about with Carrie, my best friend. She liked her life just fine, but I wanted something more. Our neighbor, Mrs. Parker, was the only one who understood me. Everyone thought she was just a crazy old woman. She was lonely, and I looked after her sometimes. Anna, you need to get out of this dump. You're so young. Go wild and live every day to the fullest. It was easy for her to say, have fun. Wearing a skirt above the knee was basically considered a crime in my town. 
Our dump was located near a large city. One day, a festival of talented youth took place there. My choir was also going. I was feeling happy and really looking forward to the trip, but I was in for a colossal disappointment. You're not going anywhere. I'm working that day, so I won't be able to go with you. Of course, I was upset, but I wasn't gonna give up. I called Carrie and I asked her to come. Dad had always treated her well and considered her a very well-behaved girl. I'll look after Anna, so don't worry. Dad hesitated a little, but agreed in the end. Hooray, I was going to the festival. Coming to the neighboring town felt like I was being transported to another world. There were so many cool guys performing at the festival. We were staying overnight and Carrie and I ended up in the same room. Let's go for a little walk. But there's nothing interesting here. Anyway, I'm gonna rehearse my part. Um, uh, okay. Then I'll go grab a bite to eat in the cafeteria. Naturally, I didn't go to the cafeteria. I walked around the stage and eagerly looked around. All of a sudden, I noticed some guys nearby. The residents of our town would have fainted if they saw their outfits. Oh, are you one of the organizers? Come join us. He probably thought that because of what I was wearing. I had a long gray dress on. The volunteers who helped out the organizers wore similar ones. I'm Dean, and this is my friend Ella. Hi. Everyone else soon left, and it was just the three of us. We got to talking. They turned out to be rock singers. Their band was performing at the festival. Dean's brother was also a volunteer, which is why they treated me so well. They even gave me fruit punch, but then. Uh, oh, oh no. How was I supposed to go on stage now? I'm sorry. Let's go to our dressing room and wash off those stains. Their dressing room was really cool. There was a table with lights in it. A bunch of makeup products were lying on it. There were guitars and a hanger with costumes in the corner. I'm so clumsy and I often get my clothes dirty. After the stains had disappeared, Ella suggested that I wait for my dress to dry. Meanwhile, we chatted about the festival. There's gonna be a cool party here late at night. Do you wanna come? What? Did I wanna go to a party? My heart immediately started pounding. On the one hand, I really wanted to, but on the other, it was scary. No, I don't think. If you didn't bring anything to wear, I can give you my dress and shoes. She came up to the hangar and picked a short dress with high heels. Here, take them. Uh, she was acting weird. Was she always sweet like this, or did she want something from me? Uh, thanks, but I, I really can't. I couldn't stop thinking about our conversation the next day. Should I have agreed after all? Before I knew it, our performance was over. The head of our choir was pleased, and Carrie was beaming. We did great! Unlike those guys. Soon, we came back to our rooms, and the head of our choir told us to turn the lights out. Carrie quickly fell asleep, but I was tossing and turning because I couldn't stop thinking about the party. In the end, I couldn't stand it any longer. Cautiously, I glanced at Carrie and got up from the bed. I tried to walk quietly so I wouldn't wake her up. I got out of the hostel and I went to the rocker's dressing room. It wasn't locked and there was no one inside, but the dress and the shoes were still there. I quickly changed and they looked at myself in the mirror. Hmm, something was missing. I had never worn makeup before, but I often watched videos of beauty gurus. I thought the results looked great. The party was held at the venue where the bands had performed. Everyone was listening to loud music and going wild. I joined them and I tried to dance too. At first, I felt awkward, but soon I relaxed and I forgot about all my worries. At some point, Dean and Ella came up to me. Anna, is that you? Wow. If it hadn't been for the dress, I don't think I would have recognized you. You look amazing. Their compliments both confused me and gave me a great confidence boost. We danced some more and then decided to take a break. Everything was going great, but Ella was making me nervous. So, you sing in a choir? Tell me, what's that like? It's not that interesting. We're from a tiny town. There's nothing to do there. Life is pretty boring. And Ella just kept asking me about my life. It seemed suspicious to me. I eventually managed to slip away from her unnoticed. Soon, Dean came up to me. A slow song had started to play, and he asked me to dance. It was so exciting. I had never danced with a guy before. I only came back to our room in the morning when Carrie was still asleep. I quickly took off my dress and I got into bed. By the way, Ella had given me the dress and shoes as a gift. I woke up to someone shaking my shoulders. Hey, why do you look like that? It took me a while to figure out what Carrie meant. And then it dawned on me. 
Damn it, I'd forgotten to remove the makeup. I had to very quickly come up with an explanation. I was coming back from the cafeteria yesterday when I saw a girl outside. She was doing free makeovers. Uh, apparently, it's a part of the festival, so I decided to try it. Carrie frowned at me. Well, wash up. You look like one of those horrible girls who performed yesterday. Carrie believed me, but she spent the rest of the day lecturing me. I came back home, and I firmly decided I wanted to change my life. Singing in a church choir and living in a small town was definitely not for me. I decided I would talk to Dad. When he came home from work, I cooked dinner. I've been thinking. After school, I want to go to a college of art and move to the neighboring city. Would you be okay with that? What? Absolutely not. After school, you're going to the local college and becoming a nurse. The college he was talking about was the only one in our town. I didn't want to study there at all, much less go into medicine. But I didn't dare argue with my dad. In the evening, I went to Mrs. Parker's place. I want a different life, but dad doesn't want to listen to me. Sweetie, it's your life. Don't listen to anyone, not even your father. Do whatever you want. Her words cheered me up a little. The next day, everyone at school was discussing the cool performance of the church choir. We did great! But did you see how terrible the young people in this city were? They were acting so shameless! Right, Anna? I nodded because I didn't want to attract attention. There's people like that in our town, too. A dance studio opened here recently. Have you heard about it? Everyone immediately started discussing the studio, and I tried to remember the address that they mentioned. I had a really crazy and daring idea. Can you guess what that was? After school, I headed to the dance studio in secret. I wanted to see what the classes there were like. This is so cool. <laughs> the girls were spinning on the pylons and doing amazing tricks. They looked elegant and beautiful. Not at all vulgar. I didn't give myself any time to change my mind. When they finished, I went up to the coach and I signed up for classes. I signed up for some prep courses to become a nurse but they aren't free. Dad looked pleased and immediately gave me the money. I knew you were a good girl. I started going to dancing classes almost every night. Anna, you have a real talent. However, being at school was only getting harder. My classmates seemed narrow-minded and boring to me. Even Carrie only ever talked about modesty and proper behavior. She constantly talked about our trip to the festival and the terrible young people there. It was scary. Their souls will go to hell for their behavior. <sighs> she was such a bore. Dean, Ella, and I had exchanged numbers, and we often texted each other. Talking to them was interesting and easy. I chatted with Dean more. At first, he was sending me friendly messages. But then, it may be hard to believe, but they became romantic. I was over the moon. Gradually, bright colors started to appear in my gray world. One day, Dean invited me to his town. It was scary, but I agreed. I told Dad Mrs. Parker was sick and I would be looking after her. He believed it and let me go. Dean met me as soon as I arrived. He brought me to the place where his band's rehearsal took place and he played the guitar for me. I decided I would show him what I had learned as well. Dean kept playing and I started dancing and at some point he stopped and kissed me. My first kiss was even better than in my dreams. After a while, Ella walked in. Anna, I'm so glad to see you. She ran up to me and hugged me. We started talking, but soon she started acting weird again. Tell me, how have you been? What's new in the choir? She was too pushy. Why would a girl like Ella be interested in my tiny town? Much less its choir. I felt like she was hiding something. In the morning, I came back home, got some sleep, and went to school. You've been distant ever since the festival. Anna, what's going on? I felt guilty, and I asked her over. We were sitting in my room and drinking tea. I'm worried about the future. That's why I've been so distant. I'm afraid I won't get into college and my dad will be disappointed. I didn't like lying to Carrie, but I didn't have another choice. She definitely would never have gotten it. I'm worried about it too. Okay. Never mind. She hugged me and I breathed a sigh of relief. A couple of days later, I was sitting at home alone when the doorbell suddenly rang. I was expecting to see anyone but Ella. What was she doing here? Surprise! I was passing through your town and <laughs> I decided to drop by. Where did you get my address? Dean's brother was volunteering at the festival, remember? 
He had access to the personal information of every participant. He helped me find out the address. I was worried sick that if I was seen next to Ella, I would get in trouble. Her clothes would definitely shock everyone here. I'm sorry, but could you change your clothes? I'll, I'll lend you some of mine. I thought Ella would refuse, but to my surprise, she agreed. The weirdest thing was that my request made her happy. Ella changed into a gray dress and we went for a walk. First, she asked to see my school, then the church and the choir. It kept bothering me more and more. What did she want? Maybe she was jealous after seeing Dean kiss me, and everything now was just a revenge plot. But of course, Ella was gonna tell my father about everything! She was just stalling! We were sitting in the church, and Ella still didn't want to leave. It's so interesting here. Tell me more. I'm sorry. I'm not a tour guide. I have a lot of other things to do. Ella looked at me in surprise. She seemed confused, but left anyway. I felt so anxious, and I was already regretting knowing her. If my dad found out, I'd be finished. But on the other hand, I had been really happy lately. Our choir was supposed to perform the next day. I wanted to change after classes when I noticed that the dress and shoes that Ella had given me were gone. Where were they? I rummaged through the closet and then it hit me. Ella must have stolen them while changing. But why? What was she up to? I had a really bad feeling about this. Are you ready? It's time to go. Almost the entire town had come to watch our performance. We sang, and everything was going fine. But then, something terrible happened. Photos suddenly began to appear on the big screen. Photos of me. Hanging out at the party with the rockers, spinning on a pole, even kissing Dean. Who could have set me up like this? I could barely breathe, and I ran away. I was done for. What was gonna happen now? I remembered Ella asking me to show her the church. She must have been the one who did this. I called her right away. What did you do that for? If you liked Dean, you could have said so instead of setting me up. Before she could even say anything, Dad came home. Anna, come here right now. I knew that if I stayed in my room, it would only get worse. I had to come out. When I came downstairs, I couldn't believe my eyes. Next to Dad was... Carrie, do you see what your daughter is like now? She was just pretending to be a decent girl. Look at what I found in her closet. She showed dad Ella's gift, the dress and the shoes. I, I didn't understand what was going on, but Carrie explained everything. I saw you leaving the room after our performance, so I followed you and I took pictures. I thought you would repent in the morning, but you lied instead. So I decided to expose you. I even followed you when you went to the city to see Dean. And then I took the dress and shoes when you asked me over and left to make tea. Anna, I didn't expect something like this from you. I'll be watching you from now on. That won't end well. Anna hasn't done anything wrong. I had a granddaughter who was also forced to be well-mannered even though she wanted to become an actress. My son controlled his daughter's every move until she ran away from home. She hasn't talked to any of her relatives since. Do you want the same thing to happen to your daughter? I was also shocked by that story. None of us had known anything about it. Hmm, maybe I overreacted. Mrs. Parker, I promise I'll think about your words. The most unexpected thing was that he kicked Carrie out of the house. Maybe my daughter isn't perfect. But what you did was worse. You spied on your friend and then betrayed her. Carrie tried to argue, but Dad pushed her quickly out the door. I was sitting in my room and thinking about what had happened. So Ella hadn't actually done anything? I felt so ashamed. So I called her and I apologized for how rude I'd been. But why were you acting so weird? You were always asking me about my life. I haven't told anyone about it, but my family has always partied a lot. I had never felt like a life like that was for me. When I heard the rehearsal of your choir at the festival, I realized that was what I wanted to do. Wow, I never would have thought that Ella would want to sing in a church choir. We cleared everything up, and a couple of days after that, I made up with my dad. I was too demanding. You can go to any college you want. I couldn't believe my luck. After the incident in the church, many citizens supported me. No one had praised Carrie for what she'd done, and soon, life got better. After graduating from high school, I moved to a big city and I enrolled in an art college. A year has passed since then. I'm living with Dean and helping with the organization of his band's concerts. Ella often comes over. She's become a real nun. 
but she also likes to go to concerts. Carrie stayed in our little hometown. Everyone there thinks she's a grumpy jerk. I hope that my story will help some of you. No one has the right to force anyone to be a certain way. We have to choose our own destiny. I woke up and didn't recognize my surroundings. I was on a street, and passerby were staring at me, surprised. The next second, I realized I was lying on a bed that some people I didn't know were carrying somewhere. J just like in that one meme. I was probably stuck in a nightmare. All of a sudden, I heard my parents shout behind us. I turned around and saw them being kicked out of our house. What was going on? I got really scared. I panicked and fainted. Hi, my name's Chloe, and I come from a very wealthy family. Dad was head of a large company. One day, I was sitting in a college cafe with my friends. We were choosing food when Claire suddenly walked by us. Everyone made fun of her because she worked part-time as a waitress in a cheap little diner. Hey, Claire, take our order. I'll give you a nice tip. Anyone else in her place probably would have refused, but Claire needed the money. She came over, listened to everything we wanted, and came back with a tray of food. Here, you've earned it. Everyone <laughs> laughed and praised my wit. Claire turned around and ran off somewhere. In the evening, my parents and I went to a gala dinner. It was thrown in honor of the birthday of Dad's company. At the entrance of the restaurant, I saw a homeless man. He had a huge beard and was wearing rags. He smelled awful. I had to cover my nose with one hand. Could you give me some money? Just enough to buy some bread. My parents grimaced. You should find a job and stop asking hard-working people for money. If you ever come up to us again, we'll call the police. When the homeless man got out of our way, we walked into the restaurant. Soon, everyone was there, and my grandpa, Mr. Ranger, took the floor. He had founded the company and then handed it over to my dad. To be honest, he hadn't been all there for a long time. We only put up with him because he gave us money so often. The official part was, as always, boring. Having nothing better to do, I wandered among the guests. Then, a conversation caught my attention. The company's employees were discussing my dad. He's a terrible boss and a real tyrant. <laughs> if it weren't for Mr. Ranger, I wouldn't be able to manage things at all. And his wife and daughter, arrogant, spoiled. They've never achieved a thing in their lives. Ugh, how dare they say that about my family? I came closer, and they got scared. Didn't expect me to hear you talking, did you? How dare you say that about my family? Dad, did you hear that? Dad was furious and fired both of them. And it served them right. The morning after the event began with bad news. When I came down to breakfast, my parents were arguing about something. They looked upset and maybe even scared. What's wrong? Just some problems at our company. I looked at him incredulously. He really wouldn't seem so nervous if it wasn't something serious. My parents' behavior made me nervous, but I calmed down soon enough. That day, I decided I would skip college. I never bothered studying hard. Why do it? I already had everything. Instead of listening to boring lectures, I went shopping. I chose a bunch of clothes and was about to pay for them when I found out that all my cards were blocked. <sighs> what the hell? I called my dad right away. The problems in the company are more serious than we thought. All of our accounts are frozen. My parents and I went to see my grandfather. He lived in a modest house, even though he was a very rich man. Dad asked him for advice. Gramps just smiled absentmindedly. There's nothing that can be done. Mom lost her temper. You crazy old man. We're about to lose our entire fortune, and you don't even care. And yeah, he really did look like he didn't care. He continued to smile and didn't even seem offended when my mom insulted him. The atmosphere at home was tense all evening. We didn't even have dinner and went to our rooms early. I spent half my night on social media trying to get my mind off things. So I didn't sleep very well because of that. In the morning, I woke up and didn't recognize my surroundings. I was outside and passerby were staring at me, surprised. The next second, I realized I was lying on a bed that some people that I didn't know were carrying somewhere. Just like in that one meme. I was probably stuck in a nightmare. And all of a sudden, I heard my parents shout behind us. I turned around and saw that they were being kicked out of our house. What was going on? I got really scared, panicked, and fainted. I came to in a shabby little room. 
There was only an iron bed and a sagging wardrobe in it. Water dripped from the ceiling. What was the meaning of this? I ran out into a narrow corridor. My parents were sitting in the next room. What happened? Why are we here? We're broke. I made a big deal that fell through. We don't even have a house left. The bailiffs came and took it. We resisted, but they just threw us out. And you were carried out on the bed. Scoundrels. I had no words. All we had left was the shack where mom and her parents had once lived. We were dirt poor. The three of us went to my grandpa's house again, but this time no one opened the door. All of a sudden, a bald man with a bushy mustache came out of the next house. Mr. Rangers left. He knew you'd come, and he asked me to give you this letter. When we read it, we were stunned. The old man said that the company had gone bankrupt, and his accounts had also been frozen. He decided he would use the last of his money to move to a house by the ocean and relax. <laughs> my parents were furious. <laughs> He's gone mad at his old age. He should have given us the money. We don't have any. We tried to think of ways where we could at least get food. I suddenly got an idea. I had a lot of friends. They could lend me a little bit. I called Mickey, but as soon as I mentioned money, my friend interrupted me. Yeah, I know your family has financial issues, but I'm not gonna lend you any. Sorry. And then she hung up. I didn't understand what had come over her. None of my other friends even bothered to answer their phones. It was really weird. By evening, the hunger was unbearable. Dad made mom and I sell our jewelry. It was all so expensive, but we barely got anything for it. I cried all night, and in the morning, I looked terrible. I wanted to skip college again, but then we got a call from the dean's office. They warned me that I had fallen behind and I'd soon be expelled if I kept missing classes. When my parents had been doing well, allowances had been made for me. But now, everything had changed. <sighs> I had to pull myself together and drag myself to college. I thought that the worst had already happened, but... That was honestly just the beginning. It turned out that someone from my college had filmed me being carried down the street on a bed, and he'd put it to music from that same meme and posted it online. The whole college had already seen it. Everyone laughed at me, but what I definitely wasn't expecting was for my friends to turn their backs on me. Even Mickey pretended like we didn't know each other. This day couldn't get any worse. Or so it seemed. I came back home in a terrible mood, and then my parents ruined it even more. They had decided to sell off my iPhone and my clothes. Instead of the cool things I once had, they gave me second-hand clothes and an ancient phone. It was so humiliating. We tried to save money, but we failed terribly. We ordered food from restaurants several times a day, and my mother went to a beauty salon for her procedures. Well, what do you expect me to do? Eat fast food? And stop taking care of my looks? Honestly, no wonder we'd run out of money so quickly. And we were left with nothing again. It became seriously obvious that we had to look for jobs. Dad's pride wouldn't allow him to work for his past employees. Mom had zero skills, so they started pressuring me. We've supported you for years. Now it's your turn. Find a part-time job. I was stunned. They wanted me to work? No way. Moreover, it wasn't like I had skills either. We had a fight, but in the end, I decided that my parents were right about one thing. I had to at least try. I responded to many ads, but no one would hire me. I couldn't even find employment in my major because I wasn't a good student. And speaking of major, things got worse in college. I had hurt a lot of people, and now everyone was taking it out on me. One day, I came to the cafeteria and wanted to get food when Mickey suddenly called my name. Hey, Chloe, bring us some of that food and you'll get a good tip. The situation with Claire immediately came to mind, and everyone laughed at me. I couldn't stand it. I burst into tears and ran away. I was standing in the hallway, wiping my face when a hand suddenly fell on my shoulder. I turned around and saw Claire, and it might be hard to believe, but she comforted me. Hey, don't worry. Soon they'll move on to bullying someone else and they'll completely forget about you. 
It's always like that. I felt ashamed of myself. I had treated her so horribly. Claire, I'm sorry for what I did to you. <laughs> I forgave you a long time ago. Oh, by the way, we need another waitress at the diner. I could put in a word for you. Of course, I didn't want to get a job at a diner, but I had no other choice. I knew working would suck, but ugh, I didn't realize how much. Problems arose on the first day. I couldn't get anything right and customers were so infuriating. I wasn't used to serving and I kept getting angry with them. It took me a whole week to swallow my pride and I couldn't have done it without Claire. She explained everything to me several times and helped out a lot. One day, a guy walked into the diner. For some reason, his face looked familiar. Where had I seen him before? I had to take his order and uh, I immediately wanted to punch him. Bring me some orange juice. Mm, no, I've actually changed my mind. I want apple juice. Here's your apple juice. Girl, are you kidding me? I asked for carrot juice. I was ready to murder him. That jerk spent several hours in the diner harassing me. Eventually, I couldn't bear it any longer and I almost started crying. But I pulled myself together and I continued to work. After my shift, Claire came up to me. Wow. He's so handsome, but so stupid. Yeah, that's for sure. And the nightmare didn't end there. He started coming to the cafe every day. I want to be served by that girl over there. I was so sick of him. In the end, I couldn't stand it any longer. What do you want from me? He surprised me by smiling. Maybe I like you. By the way, my name's Chris. You want to go for a walk with me? You know, you chose a very strange way to hit on me. Walk by yourself. That jerk ruined my mood for the rest of the day. But something nice happened in the evening. I got my first salary. I shared it with my parents. I was looking forward to the praise. They took almost all the money and then dad pursed his lips. Well, this isn't very much. S seriously There was no limit to how disrespected I could be in a day. Well, maybe you could find a job instead of blaming everything on me. After a couple days, Dad finally found a job as a manager at a small company. Mom stayed home and only sometimes went to salons. And she paid for her procedures with the money that I earned, by the way. Meanwhile, Chris kept coming to the diner. Strangely enough, he stopped being all that unbearable. He would just sit at a table and watch me work. Then he started bringing me small gifts and asking me out. Eventually, I agreed. I really wanted to get my mind off of things and feel like a beautiful girl again. Chris actually turned out to be a pretty interesting guy. He studied at a drama college and dreamed of being a famous actor. What are you dreaming about? His question stumped me. Hmm. I suddenly realized that I had been living with no goals. I thought for a long time and I decided I wanted to own a business. That goal inspired me, so I took up my studies in earnest. I started ignoring the other students' taunts, and I finally began to make progress. Even the teachers noticed it and praised me. Something had finally gone right for me. Things were looking up. However, my parents were still angry and dissatisfied. But one day, I ran out of my luck, again. The head of the diner unexpectedly called me into his office. A month's earnings have disappeared from the safe. Did you take it? What was he talking about? I hadn't taken anything, so I denied it. But then he presented me with his evidence. The camera footage showed me approaching the safe, and immediately after that, the money was gone. But I was just swiping a table there. If you don't bring back that money tomorrow, I'm calling the police. Damn it, I didn't have any rich friends anymore. And Claire was also barely making ends meet. And she was also the only one who believed me and supported me. Well, Chris believed me too. I'll figure something out. It's not like I have high hopes. When I told my parents about everything, they got angry. How could you get in a situation like this? We're already pinching pennies. It would have been better if you actually had stolen the money. What? How could you say something like that? That was when I realized my parents didn't love me. They were just as selfish as I used to be. And that's when I remembered my grandfather. He had always been interested in my life, invited me over, and took care of me. I had taken it for granted. Like my parents, I had just written him off as my crazy old gramps. I felt so ashamed of myself. I decided I would go back to his house again. Maybe he would be back home and he could help. 
On the way there, I called Chris and I told him about everything. It was kind of amazing how close we'd grown in such a short time. But no one opened the door. The next moment, my grandpa's neighbor came outside. Mr. Ranger isn't back yet. I was about to answer when I suddenly noticed something weird. The skin on his bald head was peeling off on one side. The neighbor had noticed it too and tried to push it back on, but I tore it off in one sharp movement. Then I grabbed his mustache and pulled it off. The person <gasps> under all the props turned out to be Chris. Of course, that was why he had seemed so familiar. But what in the world was going on? I still hadn't processed everything yet when my grandfather came out from behind the house. Was he kidding me? Call your parents. They should be here too. When my parents arrived, they threw a huge fit. A group of organizers had suddenly appeared as well. And that's when we found out the truth. It turned out that dad's company was doing just fine. I'm not as crazy as you think. I knew perfectly well how spoiled my son, daughter-in-law, and granddaughter had become. I wanted to teach you a lesson and arranged this little prank. My neighbor, Chris, gave me the idea. He often transforms and conducts social experiments. At first, he pretended to be a homeless guy by the restaurant. When I saw how you treated him, I realized it was time to act. It turned out that Chris had only come to the cafe to provoke me, and the money from the cash register wasn't actually missing. That was all just part of the show. My parents and I couldn't believe it. Of course, I was angry at first, but I still thanked my grandfather. This whole experience had helped me to change. The only one I was really angry at was Chris. I almost fell in love with you, but you... I fell in love with you too. Chloe, I'm sorry. At first, I was acting according to the plan, but then I really grew to like you. My parents never forgave my grandfather. They didn't at all understand why he had done it in the first place. For me, things eventually went back to normal. Well, almost. My former friends tried to get close with me again, but I ignored them. <laughs> Claire was my real friend. My relationship with Chris was doing great too. I stayed mad at him for a bit, but I eventually forgave him. We started dating. I also spent a lot of time with my grandfather. One day, I came home and heard my parents talking. They were discussing some problems in the company. I had a sense of deja vu. We're on the verge of bankruptcy again. Right, again. This must be just your old man again. He wants to ruin our lives. I didn't think that my grandpa would have repeated his prank. So the next day I went to see him and get to the bottom of things. Chloe, I had nothing to do with it. Together, we rushed to the company's head office. He personally checked every document and then shook his head. Your dad really made a bad deal. The company stayed afloat for a while, but then it failed. It took a while for my parents to believe that this was actually happening. And as a result, we lost everything again even our personal belongings and the house. Except now, for real. Dad had to go back to being a manager. Mom was constantly throwing fits. And soon, I moved out. My grandpa had some savings left. He taught me everything he knew. Failures are a part of life. They're always followed by successes. I tried to study hard. And after a while, I became the best student in our college. My grandfather and I opened a small company. And now I'm trying to develop it. I want to have my own business and then surpass my teacher. Hmm. Boo! I'm going to tell you a scary story. It's also a very interesting one. Hi, I'm Lillian. I was born and raised in Transylvania. It's famous for its ancient castles and dark legends about vampires. Ugh. My parents and I lived on a farm. I spent most of my time outside and I learned a lot about plants. I even made my own makeup products and creams. Sage plus rosemary equals <sighs> pimples. And that was how I lived until my parents got a divorce. I would have been gutted, but to be honest, mom and dad had been fighting a lot, so I wasn't all that surprised. Mom didn't let it bring her down either. This is our chance to start a new life. That's right, mom. She told me that the two of us were moving to grandma's house. <gasps> wow, hell yeah. Grandma lived in America and I had always dreamed of going there. By the way, my mom was from the US too, so she was the one who taught me English. I couldn't wait for us to move. However, I was worried I wouldn't be able to find new friends in the school. So I found a solution, and I added a guy from that town to my friends on social media. His name was Gordon, and we texted each other for days and quickly became friends. 
Well, maybe not just friends. I can't wait to see you. I'm sure you're even more beautiful in life than you are in photos. Oh, by the way, Gordon looked like some kind of Greek god. Cool, right? I was looking forward to meeting him and grandma. However, when we boarded the plane, my mom frowned slightly and looked at me seriously. Lillian, dear, promise me you won't be upset if the kids there say, uh, weird things about us. I didn't take my mom's words seriously then. I was too busy looking forward to meeting, hmm, Gordon. The town of Sweet Hill where my grandmother lived was ready for Halloween. I loved that holiday. Wow, it's so beautiful here. Look, Mom, it says there's gonna be a contest for the best pumpkin jam at the Autumn Fair. Let's go there. Absolutely. Soon, we got to Grandma's house. It turned out that it was right next to a cemetery. Would you be scared? <laughs> I wasn't. I'm so glad you're here. Grandma treated me to a pumpkin latte and gave me a tour of the house. Bunches of dried grass hung from the ceiling and there were strange flasks and unusual books on the shelves. The windows of my new room faced, ta-da, the cemetery. What a vibe. I love it. In the morning, as I was about to meet Gordon, my grandmother came up to me and sighed gloomily, just like my mom had done on the plane. Lillian, teenagers can say all sorts of stupid things. Don't listen to them, okay? <sighs> I should have listened to her. But I was too excited about my meeting with Gordon. We met in the city park. Gordon brought his friends along. Lillian, welcome to Sweet Hill. Ah, oh, Gordon was so hashtag wow. hot. He introduced me to his friends. They all turned out to be cool guys. Well, almost all of them. A girl called Nancy <laughs> clearly considered herself the local queen and looked at me like I was trash. Where did you say you were from? Transylvania. Trans what? <laughs> Does everyone there dress like you? Or are you just a beggar? Ugh. I wanted to wash out that moron's mouth with soap. Lucky for her, Gordon hey. stood up for me. Nancy, be nice to my friend. They showed me around the city. <laughs> it was fun. Soon, we came to a house on the outskirts of the city, and we saw a gloomy guy there. His face was hidden by a hood. He was sitting out on the lawn and drawing something. Gordon's friends started to make fun of him. Hey, wacko, is it true you eat worms? <laughs> you know, that's very rude. That guy's name's Chuck. He's a little weird. He walks around the cemetery at night. We tried to avoid him. A gust of wind blew Chuck's hood off and I saw a scar on his face. Our eyes met for a second. He looked away in embarrassment and then went inside the house. Hmm, that was weird, <laughs> wasn't it? Guys, let's go egg the witch's house. I raised my eyebrows curiously and Gordon explained that there was an urban legend about three witches that supposedly once lived in the city. They'd been messing with the locals. Now, another witch lived in their house. She was their descendant. Nobody really liked her. Mm. Uh, I loved scary stories, but I didn't want to harm some old lady. When we reached her house, I almost fainted. I lived there now. W what? Wait, that's my grandmother's house. You should have seen their faces. Everyone recoiled from me like they'd seen a ghost. I knew there was something wrong about you. Guys, she's the witch's granddaughter. I gritted my teeth. <sighs> that was so dumb. Gordon looked confused too, but then he smiled sweetly and put his hand on my shoulder. Come on, it's just a silly horror story. Lillian is a cool girl. We shouldn't be afraid of her. Have you forgotten about the curse? If you talk to her, you'll be in trouble. At that moment, my backpack slid off my shoulder and a notebook fell out of it. It was so unfair. <sighs> See, she's a witch. She even has a spell book in a strange language. Oh, for God's sake. I couldn't listen to that nonsense any longer. These are just recipes in Romanian. I like making soap and I write everything down. Don't take us for fools. Even Gordon took a step back mm. as if I stank of rotten fish. Ugh, now I knew what my grandma and my mom had warned me about. I couldn't sleep that night. I was still mad at those jerks and I started to read Edgar Allan Poe. Then I heard the front door slam and I looked out the window. And you know what I saw? Um, my grandma was standing in the moonlight in front of the house with a broom in her hands. Okay, but that wasn't all. I also saw someone in the cemetery. It was Chuck. He was wandering among all the monuments. Interesting. 
On the first day at my new school, things didn't go well. Everyone shied away from me and whispered behind my back. Is she really the witch's granddaughter? Nancy saw her do magic with her own eyes. God, were they serious? My classmates moved their desks away from mine. To my surprise, Gordon also participated in that circus. I didn't know idiocy was contagious. <laughs> Did you? I tried not to pay any attention to them. <sighs> Let them think all they want. At recess, I saw a poster in the hallway about an upcoming Halloween party. Wow, that would cheer me up. I was daydreaming and accidentally bumped into Chuck. His hood fell off again. Our textbooks fell to the floor and got all mixed up. We hurried to pick them up. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Nonsense. Clumsiness is my middle name. <laughs> he smiled back. You know, his scar didn't look bad at all. Chuck turned out to be nice. We lived near each other, so we went home together. Don't you hate me? I'm used to being avoided. Oh, <laughs> that makes two of us. As we talked, I asked Chuck what he'd been doing at the cemetery at night. He sighed gloomily, but he answered. When I was 10, my mom and I were in a car accident. She died, and I got this scar. Sometimes I come to the cemetery to talk to my mom and draw. It makes me feel like she's still with me. Oh, Chuck, I'm sorry. That's so sad. Thank you. You're cool. Gordon and Nancy don't deserve you. Oh, well, thank you. By the way, I thought about my recipes, and I told Chuck that I knew a natural remedy that would make his scar less noticeable. A little bit of chamomile and mint, and whoosh! <laughs> it's almost magical. All the ingredients are at my grandma's house. <laughs> Let's go! Chuck suddenly frowned at me and said he would never go into the witch's house. Wait, did he believe that nonsense too? And besides, the scar reminds me of my mom. Mind your own business, okay? That made me angry, because I was just trying to help him. Chuck turned out to be a jerk, just like the rest of them. We argued, and I came home angry. I was growing to hate that stupid city and everyone in it. But then, I noticed something strange at home. I heard the voices of my mom and my grandmother coming from the basement. Huh, what were they doing in there? I carefully peeked in and saw my mom and grandma stirring something in a huge bubbling cauldron. Can you imagine? What on earth were they doing? Was everything people were saying about my family actually true? At school, I tried to get my mind off those crazy thoughts and overheard Nancy talking about the upcoming party. I don't know which decorations to choose. It turned out she was organizing the party. Hmm. I got an idea. Um, Nancy, I think we got off on the wrong foot. I know all about Halloween. Let me help you with the party. Get away from me. You probably bring bad luck. Calm down, Lillian, and count to ten before you put that upstart in her place. But then, Gordon surprised me. Okay, girls, stop fighting. This joke has gone too far. I'm not gonna avoid Lillian anymore. He looked into my eyes, and my knees got weak. I was ready to forgive him for everything, but Nancy clearly wasn't about to let that happen. It's your funeral, Gordy. Don't come complaining when you get cursed. To my surprise and horror, she was right. The more time Gordon spent with me, the more serious the consequences were for him. At lunch, he didn't notice a spider in his juice and accidentally swallowed it. Ugh. Ew, that's disgusting. He sat on a piece of gum in math class and ripped his shorts in gym. He was so embarrassed. It was terrible. He tried not to let it get him down, but when the seams of his pockets tore and his phone fell out of it, Gordon's patience ran out. I tried, but the rumors are true. I broke the phone my parents gave me only a month ago. I'm sorry, Lillian but I can't hang out with you. He hung his head guiltily and left. Everyone at school was smirking at me. It was infuriating, but I didn't let myself cry. They wouldn't see me break down. At home, I slammed the door of my room angrily. My mom and my grandmother heard it and came to ask me if I was okay. I had been trying not to upset them, but at that moment, I couldn't help but blurt out the truth. Tell me, are we witches? They looked at each other in surprise and laughed. <laughs> Sweetie, we told you not to listen to stupid gossip. You're probably gonna laugh too, but the truth was actually a lot simpler. It turned out that many years ago, three women really had lived in our house. They were healers. 
but some ignorant people called them witches. They had actually been helping people. Grandma had followed in their footsteps. She also treated people with folk remedies. Hence the dried plants and strange books in the house. Now I knew who I got my talent from. I was just trying to decide which Halloween decorations to use when you saw me with that broom. And we were making jam for the autumn fair in the basement. One of your classmates was probably jealous of you and caused all that trouble for Gordon. I thought about it, and I remembered that Nancy had been with us every time something bad had happened. Ugh, she was such a jerk! I smiled vindictively. <laughs> it was time to show them what real witches look like. <laughs> the next day, I came to school in a witch costume. I walked past the other kids, huddling against the hallway walls in fear, proudly holding my head up. Oh, is that your best outfit? <laughs> your hat is ugly, by the way. You think so? I'll take it off then. I lifted my hat, and a toad jumped out from under it right at Nancy. <laughs> of course, I put it there in advance. Nancy screamed and ran away. <laughs> I just cackled. Ugh, I'm gonna get warts. Chuck came up to me later. You really showed her. Someone had to do it. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said nasty things about your grandmother. Hmm, never mind. At one point, even I believed all that nonsense. I'm sorry for talking about your scar. Since we've uh, cleared everything up, do you want to go to the party with me? I agreed. Not because everyone at school was afraid of me, but because I actually liked Chuck. I helped him with the costume, and we went to the party. Trick or treat! <laughs> Unfortunately, the party was terribly boring. No costume contests or creepy decorations. My classmates were wandering around the hall dejectedly with no idea what to do. Holy crud, Nancy screwed up. Oh, you think you would have done better? I know it. I would throw a party that would make your hair stand on end. Then do it. Fine, I will. Nancy dared me to throw a better party. <laughs> she didn't know who she was messing with. The real Halloween starts tomorrow. Come to the scariest party ever if you dare. It will take place in the witch's house. Everyone looked at each other with interest, but surprisingly agreed. Well, it was time to get ready. At home, I told my mom and grandmother about the plan, and they agreed to help me. Showtime. When my classmates came over the next evening, I brought them to a dark room. Are you ready? We will hold a seance and summon the spirits of the witches that used to live here. Everyone pressed against each other excitedly. Someone even hiccuped in fear. We sat down on the floor and I started to perform the seance, trying my best to keep a gloomy expression on my face. And at the most crucial moment, my mom turned on a recording of thunderclaps. She and my grandma jumped out in witches' costumes and scared my unsuspecting classmates. Who dares to bother us? Grandma was acting so convincingly that everyone scattered. Nancy was screaming louder than everyone. <laughs> it was so worth it. I turned on the light and everyone saw that the room was ready for the party. Guys, it was a prank. We prepared a lot of contests and snacks for the party. I didn't expect my classmates to like it so much. Nancy gritted her teeth in outrage and ran away. You're nuts. And everyone in your family is too. Everyone else had a great time. Wow, a cake shaped like a skeleton? Your grandmother isn't a witch, she's a miracle worker. I know. The autumn fair began the next day. Almost all the citizens presented their pumpkin jams. Hmm, which one should I try? This one or that one? I decided I would just try both of them. My mom and grandma were also taking part in the contest. I was 100% sure that our jam would win. Hi, Lillian. I'd like to apologize. What a twist. What had gotten into Nancy? I was terrible to you. I love attention, but all everyone cared about since you came here was you. <laughs> Cute. If I'd been standing behind her at that moment, I probably would have seen her cross her fingers. <laughs> that liar. But I didn't see it. So, of course, I forgive you. BFFs? Of course. 
But our friendship barely lasted a minute because right after that, I saw Nancy put something into her jam. Which one of us was actually an evil witch, huh? Just you wait. Listen up, everyone! Nancy and I made up and became the best of friends. Right, Nancy? Yeah, of course, it's true. So Nancy's gonna be the first to taste our jam in honor of that. What? Try it, Nance. For our friendship. Come on, everyone is watching. <laughs> you should have seen the face that snake made when she tasted her own poison. It's delicious. Thank you. Let me through. <laughs> As everyone laughed, she ran away looking green. Thank Dracula. My mom and grandma had prepared another vat of jam. They threw away the one that Nancy had ruined, and they won the championship. You really showed Nancy her place. Your jam is the best one here. Do you want to go to the movies tonight? Come to the club with me instead. Whoa, hold your horses, guys. Hmm, I was faced with a choice. I liked both Chuck and Gordon. However, even though Gordon had apologized, he kept turning his back on me. Chuck wasn't very popular, but at least he'd been honest with me from the very beginning. Hi, I'm Gloria. Do you want to know why I look like this? Press like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll tell you my unusual story. I don't live in a castle or work at Disneyland as a princess. I've just adored fairy tales ever since I was a kid. Cinderella is my favorite. Read to me, Dad. What? Again? Oh, all right, give it here. I lived with my dad and it was awesome. Until he married a military woman called Elvira. She was a lot. That's how I got a stepmother and two stepsisters, Kelly and Sherry. Does this remind you of anything? Yeah, I became the protagonist of my favorite fairy tale. Immediately after the wedding, they moved in with us. I came home from school and saw that Kelly and Sherry had taken my room. Hey, what are you doing here? Mom said that this is going to be our room now. How dare they? It wasn't fair. So I complained to dad, but his reaction surprised me. Honey, don't be mean. The girls should feel at home here. Well, where am I going to live? You can move into the cupboard. What? It's dusty and full of junk. Get to cleaning then. <gasps> I wasn't sure I liked the fairy tale I ended up in. Elvira made dad buy expensive outfits and gadgets for her daughters. He spent all his free time with them. They went to restaurants and boutiques. Meanwhile, I became a servant in our house. I cooked cleaned, and did the homework for my stepsisters. I was sure I'd meet a prince soon. We would live happily ever after and all the villains would get what they deserved. That's why I endured it. Gloria, wake up before Mr. Harrison sees you. What? I'm not sleeping, I'm thinking. Are you all right? You've been sleepy lately. That's my best friend, Charlie. You could say that was my fairy godmother. <laughs> <sighs> At recess? I told him that I wasn't getting enough sleep because I was doing my homework at night. I was too busy with chores during the day. You know, real life is different from fairy tales. You should stop waiting for a noble knight to come and save you from your stepmother. A stunningly handsome guy appeared in the hallway at that moment. He looked like a Disney prince. Wow. Oh, I take that back. The guy looked into my eyes seductively as he came closer. My heart started racing. Hi, could you? Yes. Move, you're blocking my locker. Oh, sorry. Later, I found out that his name was Archie. He had just transferred to our school and was rich as hell. He was perfect for the role of Prince Charming. I could imagine him confessing to me at the annual spring dance. Oh, but there is one issue. The guy of my dreams hey. wasn't paying any attention to me. Charlie, is Archie looking at me? Uh, nope. Why? Maybe his bad eyesight and can't see how cool I am. No, it's just that your prince has already found new friends. What? I turned around and saw that Sherry and Kelly were giggling at Archie's <laughs> jokes. Wow, were they trying to steal the guy of my dreams? I would show them who was the main character in our story. You know what, Charlie? I'm not going to suffer like Cinderella. It's time to act. Archie will invite me to the spring dance. You'll see. By the way, I have two tickets for the dance. What? Um, I said, <laughs> good luck. I wanted to put Sherry in their place before anything else. I decided that I would no longer be their <laughs> slave. I need the history report by morning. And so what my blouse. You'll finish before classes, won't you? Sure I will. Just you wait, dear sisters. <laughs> the next morning, I was ready to enjoy the show at school. Instead of the report, I do caricatures of Mr. Garrison in Kelly's notebook. When he saw them, he turned red as a lobster. What is this? Uh, 
It wasn't me, honest. To the principal's office now. You can explain it to him. <laughs> Kelly got what she deserved. Sherry was next. I made sure the seam on her blouse would burst at the worst possible moment. The poor thing blushed and put on a garbage bag to hide the hole. <laughs> I should have brought popcorn. The show was amazing. Aren't you going too far? Charlie, all's fair in love and war. Speaking of love, I stood by a poster about the spring dance and waited for Archie. Hi, I baked an apple pie. Do you want to try it? We could also go to the dance together. Pie? Spring dance? <laughs> Is this a joke? Cringe. Why did he think I was joking? Could there be something wrong with the way I looked? I decided to ask my dad for money and buy some new outfits. Baby, Elvira is now in charge of the family budget. You should ask her. Of course Elvira didn't give me a cent. She'd already spent all the money on her daughters. Ugh. Still, I didn't despair and decided to get some part-time job. I found a job for a maid in a mansion. Wow, they pay really well. Awesome. I knew how to do everything they needed me to do, so you're hired. Thank you. You won't regret it. I hope so. I've had to fire a lot of maids over the past few months. They kept... Well, it doesn't matter. Hmm. What was he hiding? I was overjoyed when I found out the owner of the house was Archie's father, Mr. Dickens. Now I would be even closer to the guy of my dreams. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> You're Gloria, right? You look great. I'm sorry I was rude to you at school. Wow, that was the first time he smiled at me. I'm glad that you, um, that you're working here. Unfortunately, things at my home weren't as great. My nasty stepsisters had complained to my stepmother about my harmless jokes, and Alvira told dad about it. Your daughter is completely out of control. Let's send her to a military camp. Honey, I don't think... What was that? You're right, dear. I promise I'll think about it. Wow, it seemed Dad didn't have any pride left. Pfft. Well, all right then. I would marry Archie and move into his posh house. Everyone would envy me then. I used my first salary to buy a dress and was sure my knight in shining armor would compliment me on it at school. However, for some reason, he walked by and acted like we didn't know each other. I decided to give him a nudge and deliberately dropped my textbooks in front of him so that he would help me pick them up. You know, like we're in a romantic movie. But it didn't work. Archie just mm. smiled haughtily. How can you be so clumsy? What's wrong with him? He's not perfect, you know. Why do you even like that narcissist? I want my happily ever after. You are incorrigible. That's when I noticed Kelly and Sherry. They were showing off their new jewelry to our classmates. Wow, are these real diamonds? Of course. Look at the way they're shining. Wow, where have they got something so expensive? I went to work after school. Archie's attitude was terribly upsetting. One moment he was smiling sweetly at me, and the next he was making hurtful jokes. I was thinking about it when his father walked into the living room. He looked furious. Gloria, could I talk to you for a second? Has something happened? I'm not accusing you of anything, but my wife can't find some very expensive jewelry, her earrings, and a pendant. I would never steal anything if that's what you're getting at. You seem like a good girl. I hope you really had nothing to do with it. That really hurt me. At that moment, I realized that Sherry and Kelly had been showing off a pendant and earrings at school. That made me suspicious. At home, I decided to get to the bottom of it. Where did you get those earrings? Your dad gave them to us. He said he loves us more than you. <laughs> Nonsense. Tell me the truth. It's none of your business. I wish they would send you to a military camp. I'm so sick of you. They slammed the door right in my face. Ugh, my stepsister needed to learn some manners. I didn't believe them, but decided to ask dad about it just in case. What are you talking about? We don't have enough money to buy diamonds. I knew it. Sherry and Kelly had lied to me. I told Charlie about it the next morning. Huh? That's weird. You should stay out of it. I worry about you. I didn't want to quit my job yet. I still had a faint hope that Archie would grow to like me. It would have also looked too suspicious if I quit right after the jewelry went missing. So after school, I went back to the mansion. It turned out that Archie's parents had left, so it was just the two of us there. And you know what? He was acting like an arrogant jerk. While I was vacuuming a room, he was scattering chip crumbs on the other side of it. You missed a spot. The more I got to know him, the more disappointed I was. I was passing by an open study when I saw... Wow! Archie was stealing money from his father's wallet! Damn! 
what are you doing? You're too curious for a maid. Mind your own business. They'll fire you anyway, just like they did the others. Just imagine, Archie had a whole scheme planned out. He stole money from his parents and blamed everything on the maids. I immediately remembered his father's words. I hope so. I've had to fire a lot of maids over the past few months. They kept... Well, it doesn't matter. That scoundrel! How could I be so blind? He was a spoiled teenager, not a prince. I was sure he'd stolen that jewelry and given that to my nasty stepsisters. Do you want your dad to think that I stole from you? That's a great idea. No, it isn't great at all. Put the money back, or I'll tell your parents the truth. Ha, <laughs> no one would believe you. Unfortunately, he was right. They would have believed their son and not some maid. But I had no choice. I didn't want to be accused of theft. I said, put it back. I don't know where I got so much strength from. I had been through a lot lately, and that helped me beat Archie. He eventually recoiled, looking confused. I tied him up with a curtain and took away the money. I was a Girl Scout, so I knew a lot about knots. I even had a special badge. But that's a story for another time. Well, that was easy. Untie me. You'd think that the day couldn't get any weirder? I thought so too, until... Charlie, what are you doing here? I was very worried about you and decided to follow you, but it seems you have everything under control. This is not what it looks like. You didn't see what happened. Before I could explain what was going on to my friend, Mr. Dickens walked into the study. Oh no, I was in so much trouble. What's going on here? Dad, she's crazy, help me. Archie told him that he'd caught me stealing and tried to stop me, but I'd attacked him like some sort of hook in a skirt. This is unacceptable. I'm calling security. I thought I was done for. No one would believe me. Now I would definitely be sent to military camp. Damn it. However, to my surprise, Charlie came to the rescue. That wasn't what happened. I have proof. It turned out that Charlie had seen me arguing with Archie in the window and filmed us on his phone. He showed the recording to Mr. Dickens. I told you, Charlie was my fairy godmother. <laughs> Watch this. Do you want your dad to think that I stole from you? That's a great idea. No, it isn't great at all. Put the money back or I'll tell your parents the truth. <laughs> no one would believe you. Mr. Dickens frowned at Archie. He knew the truth now and he was disappointed. My own son was stealing from me. I fired so many innocent people. You gave me too little pocket money. Have some shame. You've never wanted for anything. I'm sending you to a boarding school for boys tomorrow. Archie deserved it. Later, his parents thanked Charlie and me for helping them uncover the truth. By the way, Gloria, I was going to send Archie on a tour to Versailles during the holidays, but now he's grounded. I would like you to go in his place. Wow, Versailles? France? Thank you, Mr. Dickens. That evening, the police came to our house to take the earrings and pendant from my stepsisters and return them to their rightful owner. You know what? I'm tired of you. Elvira, you are mean and only care about money. All the evil stepmothers from fairy tales are kind compared to you. Sherry, Kelly, you are stupid and narcissistic. You will never have real friends if you keep this up. Dad, you are a complete pushover. Elvira is only interested in your money and she even turned you against me. You were much happier before they came along. I slammed the door shut angrily, leaving them standing there with their mouths wide open, and went to school. There I came up to Charlie and thanked him for his help. It was scary to imagine how things could have ended if it hadn't been for him. I wanted to go to the dance with a prince so much that I didn't notice anything around. Thank you for being there for me. Well, I'm not a prince, but I bought two tickets to the dance a long time ago. Will you go with me? To be honest, I really like you. Oh, Charlie, of course I'll go with you. What a twist, right? When I got home, I saw that neither Elvira nor her daughters were there. You've opened my eyes, Gloria. I told them to leave. Will you forgive me? Of course, I'm so glad. That's it, I'm going to the dance, and that's why I'm wearing this dress. Do you know what? This is not a Cinderella fairy tale. This is a fairy tale about me, Gloria, and it will definitely have a happy ending. When I realized that I couldn't get out, I felt really scared. I was in a laboratory, and the only door was locked. I pounded on my fists and called out for help, but no one came. A lump rose to my throat. I was such a fool! What was gonna happen to me now? I sank into a chair and put my head in my hands. You? 
Hi, I'm Roxy. I never liked studying much. Hanging out with my friends and shopping was much more interesting. I was quite pretty and always had a lot of admirers. One of them was the class rep, Sam. I often used that nerd's infatuation with me to get better marks. But it seemed I'd run out of luck as I failed another biology test. If you fail tomorrow's lab, you'll be in big trouble. I really was going to prepare, but my friends invited me to a party. So I came home late and I didn't learn anything. In the morning, I barely made myself get up and go downstairs. While I was having breakfast, there was news on the TV. Yesterday, a group of students and a college professor went missing in the mountains. Roxy, you came home in the middle of the night again. You should have been studying. Mom. If this keeps up, I'm taking away your pocket money. The threat worked. There was gonna be a cool summer collection on sale soon. I couldn't miss it. My mood plummeted. I knew I was gonna fail the lab. They would call mom to the school and then I'd have to wave my pocket money goodbye. But then something unexpected happened. When I walked into the biology classroom, a man I didn't recognize was sitting at the teacher's desk. He looked young and <laughs> pretty handsome. When everyone was finally seated, he introduced himself. Hi, I'm Mr. Collins, your new biology teacher. Wow, <laughs> we were so lucky. All the girls immediately started giggling and looking at him with interest. Sam got up from his seat. I'm the class rep. We're supposed to be working in the lab today. Ugh, I wanted to hit him. What an idiot. Why would he say that? Change of plans. I have special teaching methods. So from this day on, there's gonna be new rules. No textbooks and no cramming. Only practical classes. Everyone was pleasantly surprised. Sam was the only one who looked annoyed. Now, let's do an experiment. Does anyone want to assist me? Several people raised their hands, but for some reason, Mr. Collins chose me. <sighs> I was in trouble again. But it turned out I was worried for nothing. Mr. Collins demonstrated an experiment with plants. He gave me special gloves and he asked me to hold them. Well done. You're doing great. Everyone was discussing the new teacher at recess. He's so cool. Now we don't have to cram. I think he's kind of weird. The next day, I came to school early. My first class was biology again, and Mr. Collins asked me for help once more. We put microscopes and other devices on the tables. I was trying to flirt with him. I knew he was my teacher, but how could I resist? When the lesson started, Mr. Collins asked me for help again. Roxy, you're gonna be my assistant. Wow. You should have seen the way the other girls glared at me. While the other students were bending over microscopes, I was handing out papers and collecting test tubes. At some point, I accidentally twisted my ankle and fell. The tray with the test tubes fell to the floor and they broke. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's not a big deal. How could I be mad at such a beautiful girl? Come on, I'll help you clean up. Did you hear that? He said it was beautiful. Now, my classmates were looking at me with outright hatred. Sam came up to me at recess. Please be careful. The new teacher is really suspicious. What are you talking about? That's nonsense. Ugh. I had to stay for remedial math after classes that day because I'd skipped too many lessons. It started to rain heavily as I was leaving the school. As luck would have it, I didn't have an umbrella with me. Mr. Collins suddenly came out of the school. My car is in the parking lot. I could give you a ride. Naturally, I agreed. As we were leaving, I saw Sam nearby. He clenched his fist and glared at us. Mr. Collins talked about his unusual teaching methods as we drove, and I liked listening to him. Spending time with him was so much more interesting than with my peers. Before going to bed, I found myself thinking about Mr. Collins. I wanted to impress him. The next day, I started reading biology textbooks and watching videos on the subject. I kept volunteering to assist him in class. Gradually, Mr. Collins' lessons became weirder and weirder. One day, he even brought a Venus fly trap to the classroom. It was huge. We had to feed it insects. Ah, it bit me. Be careful, use my first aid kit. After that, Mr. Collins brought a terrarium with a giant spider to class. He began to dissect it and showed us how to extract its poison. Then he suggested we take turns looking at it. One girl had arachnophobia and fainted. The first aid kit and smelling salts had to be used again. Despite all that, everyone liked the lessons so much more than the normal ones, or rather, almost everyone. Sam was still unhappy. He was even asking Mr. Collins provocative questions during lessons. I guess he wanted to catch him in a lie, but of course nothing worked.
At first, I was only interested in biology because of Mr. Collins, but then I really came to like the subject. I even missed out on that sale to study at home. Mom was really happy about it. Good girl, you finally come to your senses. One day, I came up to Mr. Collins. I want to know more. Could you maybe tutor me? Hmm, okay. We could meet after school. We started spending a lot of time together. One day, we even had a snack in the cafe near the school. At some point, I saw Sam through the window. He was hiding around the corner and looking at us intently. Was that nerd following me? The next day, I decided I would confront him. What are you trying to achieve? Why are you spying on me? I'm spying on Mr. Collins, not on you. I've already found out something. Soon enough, I'll expose him. I got angry. Leave him alone, okay? It was clear from Sam's face that he wasn't gonna give up that easily. A couple days after that, Mr. Collins brought an x-ray machine to class. Now, you'll see what our lungs look like. Roxy, will you assist me? As usual, I agreed, undressed behind a screen and came up to the machine. All of my classmates were staring at me, especially Sam. He suddenly jumped up from his seat. This is wrong. You've gone too far. Sam ran out of the classroom. While he was away, Mr. Collins calmly talked about the way our lungs functioned. Soon, Sam came back with the principal in tow. Look what's going on in our lessons. First, there was a Venus flytrap, then spiders, and now this. Mr. Collins, come to my office. After they left, everyone started discussing what had happened. Well, that's it. He'll definitely be fired now. <clears throat> but I didn't think so. I quickly dressed and I ran to the principal's office. I wanted to protect Mr. Collins, but the office was locked. They wouldn't even let me inside. Heck, at recess, I told Sam everything I thought about him. I know you're in love with me. You're just mad because you're jealous. Admit it. Sam blushed and then mumbled something unintelligible. But the troubles didn't end there. I stayed late after school, hoping to talk to Mr. Collins, but he was nowhere to be seen. When I got home, I ran into Sam again. You'll never guess what happened. He talked to my mom. Roxy fell in love with our teacher. That's why she's trying so hard at biology. Roxy, what is the meaning of this? You do realize he's older than you. Why has your principal done nothing about this? It, it's not like that. Mom didn't listen to a word I said and still called the school. I was beside myself with rage. You're mad at me, but soon you'll realize I'm right. Angry? No, Sam, I hate you. No one knew what to expect the next day. However, when we walked into the classroom, Mr. Collins was there. Hooray! He hadn't been fired after all. I was going to assist him as usual, but he waved me off. Please take your seat. He ignored me the whole lesson. I was upset and I tried to find out why. Something wrong? Are, are you gonna be fired? Everything's fine. I didn't dare ask him to tutor me again and I went home in a terrible mood. I was walking down the street when a familiar car suddenly stopped next to me. Let me give you a ride. I was delighted and I got into the car. The principal gave me a warning about you yesterday. Sam is spreading rumors about us, so we should keep our distance where people can see. I will tutor you in my personal laboratory. We went there that day. The laboratory was located on the outskirts of the city. It was on the ground floor of an old building that kind of resembled a bunker. There were a lot of research papers and equipment in it, and I also saw a photo of Mr. Collins standing next to some young people. Judging by their ages, it looked like they were students. Oh, did you work in a college? Mr. Collins kind of stiffened. I worked in a lot of places. He got to teaching me. At Ooh. some point, I noticed a folder lying on the very edge of the table, and I decided to move it a bit. Don't touch that. I was startled and immediately pulled my hand back. What was wrong with him? A couple hours later, Mr. Collins drove me home. And the next day, Sam came up to me again. Why aren't you listening to me? Why are you still hanging out with Mr. Collins? Are you spying on me again? Look, you're in danger. He's a criminal. People went missing because of him. Don't go to his laboratory anymore, no matter what. Soon, I'll have enough evidence to actually go to the police. I swirled my finger at my temple. It seemed like Sam had completely lost his mind. After the principal's visit, biology lessons became a little less original. Mr. Collins couldn't bring anything like an x-ray machine or a Venus flytrap again. But one day, he asked me to stay after class. I left the samples in the lab. Could you go get them? Yeah, of course. No problem. I arrived at the laboratory and immediately found the right samples. Then, my eyes suddenly fell on the folder that Mr. Collins hadn't let me touch. I wondered what was in it. 
I hesitated a little, but I finally decided to open it. Inside was a dossier on some students. Wait a minute. Those were the college students from that photo. There was information about their health, age, the condition of their lungs under the photo. The more I read, the more uncomfortable I felt. A girl in one of the photos looked really familiar. I thought about it. Where had I seen her? And then it hit me. Of course. A few weeks ago, a news presenter had spoken about missing students and a professor on TV. Was Mr. Collins the missing professor? But how did he end up in our school? I looked through the folder and I froze. It couldn't be. There was information about me in it. The condition of my lungs was even highlighted with red marker. Had Mr. Collins given me an x-ray on purpose? But why? I felt really scared. I put the folder back in its place and was about to leave. The door was locked. Only Mr. Collins knew I was here. H had he locked me up? All sorts of horrors immediately came to my mind. It seemed Sam had been right. Mr. Collins was a criminal. What was he gonna do with me? And then I realized, where had an ordinary teacher gotten money for a laboratory like this at all? I wanted to call someone, but I realized there was no signal there. I sat down on a chair and put my head in my hands. What a mess. You? I was afraid I wouldn't make it in time. I followed Collins and found out the code on his lock yesterday. That's how I opened the door. Sam, you were right. About everything. Look at these photos. Sam flipped through the students' dossiers and looked at the photos. I found out that Collins used to work at a college. Some time ago, he headed off to the mountains with a group of students. After a while, he never came back, and he got a job at our school. But he used a different name. Those students were never found. He had to have done something to them. He's too obsessed with his research. I believed Sam now. We quickly took photos of every document, ran from the laboratory, and contacted the police. Mr. Collins called me several times, but I didn't pick up the phone. The cops studied the photos of the documents and they listened to our story. And soon, Mr. Collins was detained at an airport. That bastard. He would probably realized we had evidence and wanted to escape. Sam and I had to stay at the station until the evening. I felt so nervous and tired. How could I have been this wrong about someone? As we were leaving, I accidentally bumped into someone. I'm sorry. I looked up and froze. <gasps> to say that I was shocked would be to say nothing. Standing in front of me was Mr. Collins. But how was this possible? He was supposed to be being interrogated or something. Sam was also stunned and stared at him, dumbfounded. M Mr. Collins? No, I'm Mr. Gray. We're twins. Our teacher and a couple of cops suddenly came out on the porch. We finally found out the truth. It turned out that Mr. Collins had a twin brother. He was the professor from the college. They had different surnames because Mr. Gray had argued with their father and then changed it. The brothers were both talented scientists. They were working together on a science project trying to develop a cure for lung diseases. They'd even received a research grant and used that money to help build the laboratory. Mr. Gray had taken a group of students who'd helped him, and they'd gone up into the mountains to study the effects of the medicine in rarefied air. However, they'd gotten unlucky with the weather and had to hide in a cave for a long time. That was when their story had been shown on TV. The group got out, but the bad weather had lasted for a long time, and the air traffic had shut down there. They'd only just come back that day. I wasn't trying to run away. I just went to the airport to meet my brother. But who locked me in the lab then? Nobody, but I'm sorry, that's still my fault. I forgot to tell you to turn off the security system. It worked and the door closed. Sam was even more shocked than I was. After Mr. Collins was released, he apologized. I'm sorry I said nasty things about you. I'm sorry too. I imagined all sorts of horrors when I was trapped. Don't worry about it. What matters is that everyone's okay. Roxy, could I talk to you? As we walked away, Mr. Collins sighed. I noticed the way that you've been looking at me. You know, I often change jobs because of students like you. I look young and the students fall in love with me and it creates problems. Please forget about me and take a closer look at your peers, at least at Sam. The guy is head over heels in love with you. I couldn't think of anything to say to that and I just nodded, confused. Soon, Mr. Collins had to resign after all and it was all because of my mom. She caused a real scandal, but I kept studying biology on my own. I no longer relied on my looks and I wanted to become a real scientist. Sam still likes me, but I'm not interested in him. To be honest, I still can't forget Mr. Collins. Hi, my name is Araya. I suffered from a serious illness when I was a kid and stopped growing as a result. 
Look at me. I'm in high school, but I look like I'm 10 years old. And you know what? It doesn't bother me at all. There are many advantages to looking like this. I especially love pranking people. One day, my friends and I decided to prank the new elementary school teacher. I pretended to be a student who got lost. My friend took me by the hand and brought me to the younger students. The teacher spent a long time trying to figure out who I was. The class was disrupted. The kids were noisy and watched me with interest. As a result, the teacher dragged me to the principal. That's how she found out I was a high school student. When the principal started scolding me, I used my biggest trump card. I made a cute face and tried to look like the cat from that one scene in Shrek. The teacher's heart melted, and she even asked the principal not to punish me. My friends and I spent the whole day laughing and celebrating the successful prank. One day, I decided to ride a kick scooter in a park after classes and noticed a commotion. I got closer and realized there was a cool show taking place in the middle of the park. A guy was masterfully throwing bottles into the air, catching them and twirling them around himself. There was a banner behind him. It turned out that a club was opening in our city soon. The guy was a bartender mixing different drinks. I decided to get a refreshing cocktail. When it was my turn, he looked down at me and smiled. We have a delicious milkshake for kids like you. I'm actually an adult, but I'll gladly take that milkshake. The guy gave me the drink and the club's business card. There was an address and a website on it. At home, I opened the website and realized there were open vacancies in the club. They were looking for cleaners, waiters, and bartenders. I could work for them part-time even without any experience because they were prepared to teach the new workers. I had been inspired by the show in the park and immediately decided I wanted to know how to do that. The next day, I decided to go to the job interview. I was a perfect fit for the position. I was creative, funny, and sociable. That was what a perfect bartender was supposed to be like, right? But when I came to the club, something unpleasant happened. The security guards wouldn't let me in. They mistook me for a child. Only those older than 16 were allowed in. When I said I was there for an interview, they just laughed at me. Even making a cute face didn't help. I was rummaging in my backpack in search of my ID when the guy from the park suddenly came up to the club. When he found out that I was there for the job interview, he laughed as well. At that moment, I finally managed to find my ID. The guy realized that I was 17 and was absolutely stunned. You know, you wouldn't fit in here anyway. You look too young and our customers might get concerned. He didn't let me say anything and went into the club. I stomped my foot in anger. That was so unfair. But of course, I wasn't about to give up so easily. I pretended to leave and walked around the building. There was a back entrance on the other side of it and the door was unlocked. I got inside, walked down a corridor and got into the kitchen. A guy with an administrator badge was telling off the cooks. I managed to slip past them unnoticed. The other candidates were already standing in the hall. I quietly crept up to them and pretended to have walked through the front door. Then the administrator came out to us. He talked to everyone one by one, but he simply didn't notice me. Just imagine, he just looked past me and moved on to the next candidate. I tucked on his sleeve to get his attention. The administrator was surprised when he looked down and saw me. Girl, what are you doing here? The guy from the park came up to us. The name Dylan was written on his badge. Sorry, it's my fault. I didn't let her in, but she somehow managed to get into the club. Before they could kick me out, I told the administrator that I dreamed of working for them. I listed my strengths and answered all their questions. I was glad they listened to me and didn't show me the door yet. The administrator talked to everyone and said the club would be special. Bartenders wouldn't just make drinks, but also come up with different show ideas. I have to think. I'll call and tell you my decision tomorrow. Dylan walked us to the exit. While doing that, he told me in a whisper that I should have listened to him and not snuck into the club without permission. I didn't care what he thought though, and that was what I told him. The next morning, I woke up very early and started to wait for the call. Just imagine, I did get a call back. They offered to teach me and said I would be on probation. I was over the moon. After school, I ran to the club and looked triumphantly at the security guards that hadn't let me in the day before. However, once I walked in, I was in for an unpleasant surprise. Firstly, it turned out I would have to compete with two people for the bartender position, Ray and Courtney. Whoever did it better would be hired. Secondly, Dylan would be the one teaching us. What a nightmare. I shouldn't have been rude to him after all. The problems began right at the beginning. I couldn't reach the bar because of my height. Dylan didn't seem to notice. I had to look for something to stand on. By the time I got back, Ray and Courtney were already making latte art. 
Dylan didn't repeat the instructions to me, but I figured out how to do it anyway. I googled latte art, read several articles, and passed the test. On the first day, we studied coffee brewing, and on the second, we moved on to cocktails. Dylan still treated me badly. Ray wasn't paying any attention. I got along pretty well with Courtney, but she even managed to find a common language with that nasty Dylan. At some point, the administrator came again and announced our main task. You are to come up with an interesting idea for the opening day. The candidate with the best project has every chance of getting the job. You have a few days to prepare. Courtney and I left the club. We were heading the same way. We discussed the projects, but didn't have any ideas yet. As we were passing by the mall, when Courtney suggested we go shopping, I wanted to buy new clothes, so I agreed. First, we went to look at the clothes for adults, but they were all too big for me. So we decided to look at the clothes for kids next. Then that was when I heard someone crying nearby. A little boy was sitting on the floor and crying buckets. His parents were trying to calm him down, but nothing worked. I noticed a big teddy bear nearby and got a cool idea. I immediately unzipped it and quietly climbed inside. Hey boy, why are you crying? He stared at the talking bear, surprised. I talked to him a bit more and he calmed down. He didn't want to leave my side after that. After his family left, I got out of the bear and immediately realized something. But of course, I had an idea for the project. I could organize an animator show at the club. I could dress like a bear again, make drinks, and entertain people. A bunch of cool ideas immediately sprung up in my mind. I shared my thoughts with Courtney and asked her if she liked my idea. I'm not sure. I don't think they'll like it. After all, the club is for older kids and that seems childish. Her words made me doubt. At home, I hesitated a little more, but eventually decided to take a chance. I created a folder on my laptop and saved different ideas there. I spent half the night searching the internet and got inspired by various articles. As a result, I prepared a cool program for the evening. Of course, the selling point was me. Tell me, have you ever seen a bartender looking like a big cute bear? Cool, right? I made a sketch of the costume and sent it to a sewing shop. They promised me it would be ready soon. While everyone was doing what Dylan told them to the next day, I was coming up with cool names for cocktails. When Dylan noticed it, he got angry and scolded me. I had to explain that it was for the project. Dylan pursed his lips in displeasure. He was so infuriating. I wanted to ask Courtney if she wanted to go home together again when I noticed something unexpected. She was chatting with Dylan. Not just chatting, but flirting. I didn't understand how anyone could like someone as boring as Dylan. Well, it was none of my business, of course. Finally, it was the weekend. I woke up early to stop by the sewing shop before work. The costume looked awesome, just like I'd imagined it. As I was leaving, I ran into Ray. It turned out that he lived nearby and happened to be passing by. We went to the club together. When we walked in, Courtney and Dylan were already there. I saw them spring apart. Courtney was biting her lips, and they seemed swollen. It became clear the two had been kissing. What did Courtney even see in him? I reminded myself that it was none of my business and focused on my work. My signature cocktails kept getting better by the day. I especially liked the bubblegum one. During the break, I decided to get some fresh air. I left the club and sat down on a bench. All of a sudden, I heard muffled voices. Dylan and the administrator were talking around the corner. I eavesdropped. She's no good and will definitely fail. She's also too brazen and sticks her nose where it doesn't belong. That jerk! Was he complaining about me to the administrator? What did I ever do to him? In any case, let her try. We'll look at her project and then decide. By the way, we were supposed to present our projects that evening. We had to walk into the administrator's office one at a time. We were sitting in the lounge area and putting the finishing touches on our programs. I finished faster than the others. I was terribly worried, but decided to go first anyway. I had just gotten out of my seat when Dylan accidentally knocked over a shaker and its contents spilled all over me. Luckily, the drink didn't get on my laptop. I asked everyone to wait and ran to the bathroom. My bubblegum cocktail had been in the shaker. It was terribly sticky and I barely managed to get the bright pink stains out of my clothes. After that, I tried to get out of the bathroom, but the door wouldn't budge. What the hell? I pushed it again, but it wouldn't open. Had someone locked me in? Hey, let me out! Anybody? I'm here! No one heard me. I panicked, but quickly pulled myself together. There was always a way out. I looked at the big window. There was no way to open it. Only the small window was ajar. Hmm, I tried to get out through it. Naturally, an adult would not have succeeded, but I was a girl with the figure and height of a child. So I succeeded. I told you there were advantages to looking like me. When I came back to the gym, it turned out no one had waited for me. Courtney had gone into the office first. As I got back, she was coming out of it, beaming and satisfied. 
I went after her. I was focused and confident. I had almost no doubt that my project would be chosen, but something was wrong. I started talking about my program feeling confident, but the longer I talked, the deeper the administrator frowned. I felt a little uncomfortable. When I finished, there was silence in the office. The administrator was silent for a while and then asked the next candidate to come in. He didn't comment on my project at all. While Ray was in the office, I was terribly nervous. When the administrator came out to announce his decision, it only got worse. He paused and I wanted to kill him. Couldn't he see how nervous we were? The winner is Courtney. Courtney jumped up and screamed with joy. The administrator looked at me and frowned again. And you won't get anywhere in life with such an attitude. I felt wronged. Was my work really too childish? I tried so hard and come up with such a cool idea. The administrator didn't say what Courtney's project was. He invited everyone to the opening night and said that we would see everything for ourselves. I congratulated Courtney and wandered home, lost in thought. I was really down. It felt like something wasn't right. The administrator couldn't have hated my project that much. All of a sudden, I had a terrible thought. What if Dylan had spilled the cocktail on me on purpose so that Courtney would go in first or maybe even helped her get the job? They were kind of together. It seemed very likely. Such an injustice made me furious. I sent an angry message to Dylan and told him everything I thought of him. That jerk soon replied and told me to lose with dignity. How could he call me brazen when he was acting like that? For the first time in a long time, I was really down and stayed at home. I didn't want to go anywhere. As usual, I tried to look at the bright side, but it was hard. I convinced myself that I didn't truly want to be a bartender, but it was a lie. I really, really wanted to. The evening before the club opened, Dylan suddenly called me. He was the last person I wanted to talk to, and I didn't answer. He dialed me a few more times, and then Ray suddenly texted me. He asked if I was at home. Soon, the doorbell rang. It was Ray and Dylan. What was he doing there? I wasn't about to let him in, but Ray convinced me to hear them out. When Courtney won, she was bursting with joy. We got to talking and she blabbed about her teddy bear project. I immediately remembered seeing you in the sewing workshop. Your costume had been sticking out of the case. It had been a bear as well. I told Dylan about it and I immediately got suspicious. Our administrator had mentioned that you had stolen Courtney's idea, but according to Ray, the idea had originally been yours and Courtney had been the one to steal it. I was absolutely shocked. Had Courtney set me up? I immediately remembered telling her about my idea at the mall. While I had been working on my laptop in the lounge area, Courtney had been nearby as well. She could have easily copied the files. When I told Ray about being locked in the bathroom, Ray also remembered something. While I had been trying to get the stains out, Courtney had gone off somewhere for a while. She must have locked me up to present her project first. Dylan suggested we go to the club at once and get to the bottom of things. I agreed, but didn't understand why he was helping me. You said that I was good for nothing and too arrogant. Dylan said that he hadn't been talking about me. We were talking about Courtney. She kept failing during our lessons and trying to get the job through me. Whoa. It turned out I had misunderstood everything and been paranoid for nothing. When we arrived at the club, we saw the administrator arguing with Courtney. He was asking her about various details of the project. He wanted to know how best to arrange and organize everything. I hadn't written such details down, so Courtney didn't know about them. The administrator looked angry, but she just stayed silent. That was when I intervened and explained everything. After that, Dylan told the administrator about Courtney's lies and the idea being mine. Courtney was kicked out in disgrace and I was hired in her place. To say that I was happy would be to say nothing. The long-awaited opening took place the next evening. The show went great. The visitors loved the bear costume. The animation program and presentation of drinks went without a hitch. Ray had also been hired and he was helping me. At the end of the show, everyone wanted to see the real me. I took off my costume and the club guests gasped. As usual, I was mistaken for a child. I had to explain that I was already 17 and just looked like that. Ray and Dylan filled in for me at the bar and I sat down on the couch to take a break. People kept coming up to me and asking about everything. Chatting with the guests was very fun. The opening of the club was successful. I got the job I wanted and became the club's trump card, the one its owners had been looking for. Dylan and I get along now. I've gotten used to working with him and Ray and we've become a great team. I like to make drinks. My bubblegum cocktail is the most popular one on the menu. But most of all, I like to pretend to be a little girl and prank the new club visitors.